Motor Vehicle Registry, MVR. Your guide to safely sharing the roads in the Northern Territory. August 2020. Road Users Handbook. nt.gov.au. Road Users Handbook. Your guide to safely sharing the roads in the Northern Territory. Copyright Copyright Motor Vehicle Registry. Published in Australia by the Northern Territory Government. 5th edition, August 2020, ISBN 978-0-6487445-3-5. Motor Vehicle Registry Road Users Handbook I. Contents. Disclaimer 7. Introduction 8. Important Information 9. Application Forms 9. Change of Details 9. Privacy 9. Demerit Points X. Transferring an Interstate License X. Purchasing Vehicles, Third Party Interests X. Purchasing a Safer Vehicle 11. Photographs 11. You Must Carry Your Driver License 11. How to Use This Handbook 1. Licenses 2. Obligations of License Holders 3. The Licensing System 3. C-Class Graduated Licensing Scheme 4. License Classes 5. Medical Fitness to Hold a License 7. Organ Donation 8. How to Obtain a Class C Learner License 9. Become an MVR Customer 9. Driver Knowledge Test 9. DriveSafe NT 11. License Restrictions for Class C Learners 12. Learning to Drive 12. L Plate Rules 14. How to Obtain a Class C Provisional License 15. The Practical Driving Test 15. Where can I do my test? 15. When can I sit a test? 15. License Restrictions for Provisional Class C Drivers 15. nt.gov.au P-Plate Rule 16. Road Safety 18. Distractions 19. Mobile Phones 20. Television Receivers and Visual Display Units 20. Speeding 20. Driving on Unsealed Roads 21. Alcohol, Drugs, Medications and Driving 21. Fatigue 24. Passenger Safety 25. Night Driving 27. Duty of Care 27. If you're involved in a road crash 28. If you witness or see a road crash 29. First Aid and Further Assistance 30. Sharing the Road with Pedestrians 30. Sharing the Road with Motorized Wheelchairs 31. Sharing the Road with Trucks and Buses 32. Sharing the Road with Cyclists 33. Sharing the Road with Motorcycle Riders 38. Animals as Vehicles, Sharing the Road Safely 39. Safe Driving 40. Observation Skills 41. Speed Management Skills 41. Crash Avoidance Space, Road Positioning 41. Crash Patterns 45. Hazardous Situations 46. Footwear 46. Driving at Night 46. Lights 46. Driving in the Rain 47. Animals and Stock 47. Breakdowns 47. Driver Fatigue. Long Range Driving 48. Four Wheel Drive Vehicles 49. Overtaking Lanes 49. Motor Vehicle Registry Road Users Handbook 3. Driving with Road Trains and Heavy Vehicles 49. Safe Following Distance. Crash Avoidance 51. Single Vehicle Rollovers 51. Skidding 51. Footbrake Failure 52. Braking with Anti-Lock Brakes 52. Tire Blowout 52. Shattered Windscreen 52. Speed Limits 53. Towing Caravans and Trailers 54. Road Conditions 55. Bushfires and Smoke 56. Water on the Road 56. Bogged 57. Basic Driving Techniques 58. Driving Posture 58. Seatbelts 59. Airbags 59. Braking Technique 59. Steering Technique 59. Active Driver Assist System 60. Eco Driving 61. General Road Rule 62. Speed Limits 63. School Buses 66. Speed Camera 66. Safety Camera 66. Alcohol Limits 66. 
Drugs, Legal and Illegal 67. Seatbelts and Child Restraints 68. Police, Fire and Emergency Services 70. Funeral Processions or Authorized Processions 70. Intersections, Give Way and Turning 70. Priority for Buses 71. Give Way Rules Where There Are No Signs 71. Signaling, Indicating, 75 nt.gov.au Turning 76 Median Strip 79 Traffic Lights 80 One-Way Streets 81 U-Turns 81 Three-Point Turn 82 Roundabouts 83 Traffic Lights 85 Early Warning Signals Wigwags 88 Red Light Cameras 88 Cyclist and Pedestrian Signals 89 Road markings 90. Key clear pavement marking 94. Edge lines 95. Audible lines 96. Curb lines 96. Cyclist and pedestrian crossings and refuges 96. Traffic signs 98. Warning signs 100. Warning triangles and safety vests 4. Crashes and breakdowns 104. Stock signs 104. Injured Animals 105 Variable Message Signs 106 Driving Safely Through Roadworks 106 Temporary Roadwork Signs 108 Lanes 110 Overtaking 114 Overtaking Cyclists 115 Oversized Vehicles 116 Large, Heavy Turning Vehicles 116 Bridges 117. Parking 118. Lights and horns 127. Emergency vehicles 129. Railway level crossings 130. Towing 132. Motor vehicle registry road users handbook fee. What to do after a crash 132. Animals and vehicles 134. Vehicle Registration 136 Vehicle Registration and Compulsory Third-Party Insurance 137 Driving an Unregistered Vehicle 138 Vehicle Inspections 138 Vehicle Number Plates 139 Roadworthiness 140 Protrusions on the Front of Vehicles 141 Defect Notices 142 before driving on the road, check, 142. Penalties, 144. Traffic offenses, 145. Demerit points for traffic offenses, 145. Speeding offenses, 145. Other serious driving offenses, 145. Negligent or dangerous driving. Causing injury or death, 145. Hooning 146. Drink driving 146. Driving without a license 146. Find default slash unpaid fines 147. Glossary 148. MVR offices 155. MVR contact center 155. Office locations 155. Feedback 155. Disclaimer. This handbook is not intended to be used as a legal document. It is intended as a guide only, and its aim is to set out, in simple form, the main legal requirements in the Northern Territory that a driver is required to observe in everyday driving, as well as other useful information for drivers. Motor Vehicle Registry Road Users Handbook 7 this handbook is not the law, but is a guide to some of the laws relating to driving in the Northern Territory. Be aware that the statements in this handbook are not precise legal interpretations of the road traffic laws. Any diagram, pictures, or examples are included for illustrative purposes only and are not intended to be definitive. Not every law is covered in this document. Laws are subject to change from time to time. The information in this book is believed to be correct at the time of original publication, but may not accurately reflect the current law. 
This document only covers the Northern Territory, and while many laws and regulations are uniform across Australia, some laws are different in other places. When driving slash riding interstate, please familiarize yourself with other states' road rules and demerit point systems before you travel. If you require a more detailed statement of the law, Northern Territory legislation can be found on the NT.gov.au website. The information in this publication is provided in good faith and is believed to be accurate at the time of publication. The Territory will not be liable for any loss sustained or incurred by anyone relying on this information. Other Publications Learner Driver's Guide Motorcycle Rider's Handbook Good Gear Guide for Motorcycle and Scooter Riders Heavy Vehicle Driver's Handbook nt.gov.au Introduction The Road User's Handbook provides an overview of road and traffic legislation in the Northern Territory. It provides practical information on road rules as well as road safety tips, low-risk driving techniques, vehicle registration, and penalties for driving offenses. The handbook is essential reading for anyone learning to drive, ride, or upgrade a license. License applicants may be asked questions in the knowledge test on any of the topics covered in this handbook. All sections should be read carefully. It is also a good way for experienced drivers to keep up to date with changes to road rules, and it is informative for interstate or overseas visitors who want to drive in the Northern Territory. All road users in the Northern Territory are responsible for their actions and are subject to the rules, regulations, fees, and charges, as well as penalties that are outlined in the following legislation. Motor Vehicles Act 1949 Motor Vehicles Regulations 1977 Motor Vehicles Fees and Charges Regulations 2008 Motor Vehicles Standards Regulations 2003 Motor Vehicles Standards Regulations Australian Vehicles Standards Rule Traffic Act 1987 Traffic Regulations Includes Schedule 3 Australian Road Rules 1999 When driving interstate, please familiarize yourself with other states' road rules and demerit point systems before you travel. Remember, safe road use is a responsibility we all share whether as drivers, motorcyclists, bicycle riders, pedestrians, or passengers. This publication is also available for free on the NT government website at nt.gov.au. Motor Vehicle Registry Road Users Handbook 9 Important Information Application Forms Application forms are available online at mvr.nt.gov.au. AU and at all MVR offices. Contact information for MVR can be found at the back of this handbook. Change of details. All license holders and owners of registered vehicles must notify MVR within 14 days if any of the details recorded against their license or registration changes. Some common examples are changes of name or address. The MVR must also be notified if a license card or vehicle number plate is lost, stolen, defaced, or damaged, or if a vehicle is sold, disposed of, or altered. You can update your contact details online, over the phone, or in person at a MVR office or participating Australia post outlet. For more information, phone the MVR contact center on 1300 654 628 or visit the ntd.gov.au website. Privacy. The Registrar of Motor Vehicles collects and retains your personal information, such as photographic images, biometric data, registration, and licensing history under provisions on the NT Motor Vehicles Act 1949. The information you provide is disclosed to government, law enforcement, and other bodies as required by Australian. Law. Your license and registration details are also supplied to NEVDIS for the purpose of national exchange of vehicle and driver information. Documents you provide may also be verified with the issuing authority through the Commonwealth Document Verification Service. All personal information is managed in accordance to information privacy principles under the NT Information Act 2002. For more information on privacy, go to the Office of the Information Commissioner website nt.gov.au Demerit Points 
A demerit point scheme operates in the NT. All drivers are subject to action against their license if they reach their demerit point threshold. You will reach your demerit point threshold and have your license suspended if you are an unrestricted license holder and have accumulated 12 points or more within a three-year period. A provisional license holder and have accumulated five or more points within 12 months or 12 points within a three-year period. A learner license holder and have accumulated five or more points within 12 months or 12 points within a three-year period. A visiting driver and have accumulated 12 points or more within a three-year period. For more information or to check your demerit point tally online, visit nt.gov.au. Transferring an interstate license. Drivers visiting from other Australian jurisdictions are considered NT residents after living in the Northern Territory for three months and must transfer their interstate license to an NT license. Exclusion from insurance or benefits reductions may apply if you are deemed a resident of the Territory and have not transferred your interstate license. If your interstate license is current, transferring your license can be done at no cost. Any time remaining on the interstate license will be transferred to your new NT license, provided that the remaining time on your interstate license is not a longer period than you could have an NT license issued for. In most cases, the same license classes and conditions will apply between Australian states and territories, however. There may be individual cases where items such as provisional requirements or other license conditions are not identical in all jurisdictions. In these cases, NT rules will be applied when you transfer your license. Any demerit points accrued in other jurisdictions could also affect your NT license, but have an NT license issued for. Purchasing vehicles, third-party interests. Before you purchase a vehicle, it is recommended that you find out if there is any third-party interest in it. The Personal Property Securities Register, PPSR, is an Australian government initiative where a third party, banks and financial institutions, can record a financial interest against personal property, such as motor vehicles. The PPSR also provides current vehicle registration details and notes if the vehicle has been recorded as stolen or written off. To check the third party interests registered against a motor vehicle, visit the PPSR database at www.ppsr.gov.au and conduct a motor vehicle search by serial number, VIN, or chassis. Motor Vehicle Registry Road Users Handbook 11 Purchasing a Safer Vehicle Before you purchase a vehicle, it is important you consider the level of safety it can provide in the unfortunate event of a crash as well as its ability, through technology, to avoid a crash. ANCAP safety ratings are determined based on a series of internationally recognized crash tests and assessment of safety features and technologies. Vehicles tested by ANCAP are awarded an ANCAP safety rating of between 1 to 5 stars, 1 star providing poor protection, 5 stars providing good protection, indicating the level of safety they provide in the event of a crash. Collision avoidance technologies also form part of the overall safety rating assessment. ANCAP recommends vehicles which have the maximum 5-star ANCAP safety rating. ANCAP safety ratings are available for a wide range of makes and models. Check the ANCAP safety rating of your next vehicle at www.ancap.com.au. Photographs When you are issued with a NT driver license, your photograph will be digitally stored by MVR. The stored image can be used for renewals of your license for up to 10 years, as long as your appearance does not change significantly during this time. Your photograph will need updating every 10 years. You must carry your driver license. You must carry your current license with you at all times when driving or riding. A person occupying the front passenger seat while supervising a learner driver must also carry their current full license. Failure to produce your license on demand is an offense. How to use this handbook. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook. How to use this handbook. Learner drivers and riders must read this handbook thoroughly to be able to get a learner license. License applicants may be asked questions in the driver knowledge test on any of the topics covered in this handbook. All sections should be read carefully. 
Other road users can refer to the handbook to check current road rules or to refresh their understanding about road safety and safe driving techniques. You will see references to both drivers of motor vehicles and riders of motorcycles and to driving and riding. For the purposes of this handbook, the terms driver and driving also refer to motorcycle riders and to riding a motorcycle. To make it easy to find what you are looking for, the handbook has been divided into the following sections. Section 2, Licenses, overviews licensing requirements for people to obtain a license to drive or ride on NT roads. Also useful for drivers planning to upgrade a license to drive a different vehicle, such as a truck. Section 3, Road Safety, important information for all road users on how to behave on the road to prevent crashes. Section 4, Safe Driving, safe driving techniques and behaviors and important information for all drivers. Section 5, General Road Rules, a comprehensive coverage of the main rules governing our roads. 1. Section 6, Vehicle Registration, a brief explanation of vehicle requirements to register a vehicle. Section 7, Penalties, an overview of the penalties for traffic offenses. Section 8, Glossary, Definitions of terms used in the handbook. MVR Offices provides contact information. If you're going to drink, don't drive. Towardzero.nt.gov.au Licenses. Who's your sober Bob? Sober Bob is someone willing to get you home safely. A mate, bus driver, taxi driver, mom, brother, girlfriend, or uncle. Sober Bob is about planning how you get home before you go out. Remember to ask yourself, who's your Sober Bob? Motor Vehicle Registry Road Users Handbook 3 Your responsibilities are clearly stated throughout this handbook, and it is expected that you will use any vehicle that you operate with safety, efficiency, courtesy, and common sense at all times. Having a driver's license will increase your opportunities for employment and recreational activities and can also give you independence. However, do not forget that. It will also bring increased responsibilities. If you lose your license by failing to meet your responsibilities, the consequences could be serious and many opportunities will disappear. Obligations of license holders. Think of your license as a contract or an agreement between you as a driver and the rest of the community. The Motor Vehicle Registry and the Northern Territory Police administer this contract. Your license is also an important identity document and should be kept safe at all times. Do not abuse your license or allow it to be misused. There are heavy fines if you fraudulently alter or use a license if you lend a license to another person or if you allow a license to be used by another person. Northern Territory roads are provided for drivers to use if they meet certain conditions. Drivers must show that they understand the road rules, most of which are written in this handbook in plain English. Show the skills necessary to drive safely. Obey the laws and drive responsibly. Pay a license fee, which goes towards the administration of the licensing system. Show that they understand the community's concerns to reduce the impact of traffic on the environment and to use the road system efficiently. The contract between you as a driver and the community can be broken by traffic offenses that cause inconvenience, costs, or suffering to others. These offenses carry penalties such as fines, license cancellation, disqualification, or suspension. In extreme cases, the offense could lead to a prison sentence. The licensing system. The Northern Territory licensing system helps to make travel on our roads safer for all road users. It provides rules and conditions for license holders and penalties for drivers who do not meet their responsibilities. The licensing system also ensures that license holders have the required knowledge and skills to safely operate the vehicle they are licensed to drive or ride. To drive on public roads in the NT, you must be licensed and have the correct license class for the type of vehicle you are driving nt.gov.au To legally drive on public roads in the NT, you must have the right class of license for the vehicle you are operating. You must hold a current NT license if you are an NT resident. You must hold a current interstate license if you are visiting from interstate. 
If you are visiting from overseas, you must hold a current license from your country, and if your license is not in English, you must also carry an international driving permit or an official English translation of your overseas license. You cannot drive on public roads in the NT if you have a license that is expired, a license that has been cancelled or suspended, had your driving privileges withdrawn in the Northern Territory. Been disqualified from driving by a court of law in Australia or overseas. When your license is checked, police can check your license at any time, and they will also check that you have the correct license when you are involved in a crash, whether you are at fault or not. You have been stopped because you committed a traffic offense. You have been stopped for a random breath test, either by a stationary breath testing unit or by a mobile breath testing unit. C-class graduated licensing scheme. The Northern Territory has a graduated licensing scheme for new drivers. The scheme prepares inexperienced drivers for a lifetime of safe and efficient driving. New drivers are required to pass both the learner and provisional license testing stages before obtaining a full license. A new driver will progress through four stages to obtain a full license. Motor Vehicle Registry Road Users Handbook. Stage one: Licensing Scheme. Pass the driver knowledge test to obtain a learner license. Stage two: Practice driving with supervision for a minimum of six consecutive months. Stage three: Driving test. Pass the driving test to obtain a provisional license. Stage four: Full license. If you are under 25 years old, you will need to hold your provisional license for at least two years before you can upgrade to a full license. If you are 25 or older, your provisional license needs to be held for at least one year. Five, if your license is suspended or cancelled during your provisional period, you will need to spend a longer time with the provisional license once your suspension is lifted, or you will need to start the provisional period again if your provisional license is cancelled. At the end of your provisional period, you can apply for a full license. Phone the MVR on one three zero zero. Six five four six two eight, or renew your license online using MVR QuickPay at NTG Gov. AU. You may be eligible for a free ten-year license. Remember that learning to drive well requires lots of experience that will only come with time and lots of practice in different driving situations and conditions. Use every time you drive as an opportunity to learn, and try to continue practicing with an experienced driver as often as you can. License classes. The NT has different license classes for the various types of motor vehicles that use Northern Territory roads. To be allowed to drive or ride, you must hold the correct license class for that vehicle. The list below shows the type of vehicle you can drive under each class of license. Rider R. Any motorcycle or motor tricycle. NT.gov.au. Car C. A vehicle that is no more than 4.5 T gross vehicle mass (GVM). Holders of A C class license may also drive some civil construction and agricultural vehicles. Light rigid L R. A vehicle that is more than 4.5 T GVM but no more than 8 T GVM. Can tow a trailer of no more than 9 T GVM. Holders of an L R class license can also drive any vehicle allowed by A C class license. Medium rigid MR can tow a trailer of no more a vehicle that has two axles and is more than eight T GVM can tow a trailer of no more than nine T GVM. Holders of an Mister Class license can also drive any vehicle allowed by an LR or C Class license. Heavy rigid HR a rigid vehicle that has three or more axles more than eight T GVM can tow a trailer of no more than nine T GVM. Can drive articulated buses. Holders of an HR class license can also drive any vehicle allowed by an MR, LR, or C class license. Motor Vehicle Registry Road Users Handbook. Heavy Combination (HC). A prime mover attached to a semi trailer plus any unladen converter dolly. A rigid vehicle towing a trailer of more than 9 T GVM. Holders of a HC class license can also drive any vehicle allowed by a HR, MR, LR, or C class license. Multi combination MC. 
any V-double or road train. Holders of a MC-class license can also drive any vehicle allowed by a HC, HR, MR, LR, or C-class license. 7. Medical Fitness to Hold a License All drivers and riders must be medically fit to drive a motor vehicle and are subject to personal and legal responsibilities and liabilities. In reality, very few conditions prevent the issuing of a driver license. Northern Territory laws require all drivers or intending drivers to notify the Registrar of Motor Vehicles if they have any medical condition, including disability, mental illness, or eyesight. That could affect their ability to safely and legally drive motor vehicles. Health professionals are also required to notify the Registrar if they believe. A patient's medical condition could affect their ability to drive a motor vehicle. The MVR is responsible for issuing, renewing, suspending, or canceling a person's license, including a conditional license, and decisions are based on a full consideration of relevant factors relating to health and driving performance. If you have any questions about medical fitness to hold a license, please contact the MVR on 1300-654-628 or consult your health professional for advice. nt.gov.au Drivers with Medical Conditions When you apply for a license, you must state whether your medical condition could affect your driving. Depending on the condition, you may need to have an assessment of your fitness to drive carried out by a health professional. Certain medical conditions could require that you complete an on-road driving assessment with an occupational therapist who will assess your ability to drive in relation to your medical condition. Many drivers with medical conditions find that they are allowed to drive, with conditions applied. For example, it is quite common for some driver's licenses to have a condition that they must wear glasses while driving or that they can only drive automatic vehicles. Driving and Dementia The gradual and permanent loss of mental functions caused by dementia will, over time, reduce a driver's ability to drive safely. In the early stages of this condition, doctors, family, and friends should discuss. Alternative Methods of Transport for Drivers Showing Signs of Dementia Each person with dementia will have a different pattern and timing of their reduced ability to drive as their condition progresses, and some people may not need to stop driving immediately. Individual assessment and regular review are important, even though it is difficult to predict the point at which a person will no longer be capable of driving safely. Organ Donation the place to register your intention to be an organ donor is the Australian Organ Donor Register, AODR. Organ donor information is available at www.humanservices.gov.au or call 1-800-777-203 for a registration brochure. If you would like more information before making your choice, please contact Donate Life NT, the organ donation agency for the Northern Territory at www.donatelife.gov.au or phone 08-8922-8349. Motor Vehicle Registry Road Users Handbook 9 How to Obtain a Class C Learner License Become an MVR Customer The first step to getting your Class C Learner License is to become an MVR Customer. You will need to Be at least 16 years of age Provide evidence of your identity, prove who you are. Provide evidence of your residency, prove that you live in the NT. Have your photo taken by an MVR officer. For information about evidence of identity and residency requirements, please contact MVR on 1300-654-628 or visit the ntgov.au website. To obtain a Class C learner license in the NT, you can either Pass a driver knowledge test, DKT, at an MVR office. Or enroll in the DriveSafe NT program. Applying for a learner license. To apply for a learner license at MVR, you must be an MVR customer. Be at least 16 years of age. Pass an eyesight test. Pass a knowledge test. Pay the learner license fee. You can also apply for a learner license through the DriveSafe NT program. For more information, visit the drivesafe.nt.gov.au website. Renewal of a Learner License 
If your learner license is nearing expiry and you are not ready to sit the driving test to obtain a provisional license, you can resit the theory test to renew your learner license for another two years. If you wait until after your learner license has expired to resit the theory test, you will also need to wait another six consecutive months before you can sit the driving test. Driver Knowledge Test Passing the Driver Knowledge Test, DKT, will prove that you have an understanding of the road rules in the Northern Territory. To prepare for the DKT, you should study this handbook carefully. All the information you need to pass the test is covered in it. You can test your knowledge of the road rules by taking the practice DKT on the mvr.nt.gov.au website. When studying this guide, be careful not to skip any sections. All the information in this guide is relevant to you. nt.gov.au Where to go for the driver knowledge test? A DKT can be taken at any MVR office up to one hour before the MVR office closes. How the driver knowledge test works? The DKT consists of 30 questions, randomly selected from a question bank of approximately 300. During the test, you are not allowed to receive any assistance. Refer to any resource materials that would help you to pass the test, such as this handbook, other books, notes, websites, mobile phones, etc. Use a mobile phone or other communication device. Speak or signal to any other person, except the registry officer when necessary. Leave the test area. People caught cheating will fail the test immediately and be banned from taking another DKD for two weeks. Unsuccessful driver knowledge test. If you do not pass the DKT, you can try again as many times as you need to in order to pass it. The next time you attempt a DKT, you will be given a different set of questions to answer. You should only reattempt the test when you are ready. To check if you are ready, test your knowledge by taking the practice driver knowledge test on the mvr.nt.gov.au website. Applicants requiring assistance. Special needs. If you have special needs, such as a physical or mental impairment, you or your representative should discuss your needs for taking the test with the MVR before booking a DKT. This allows time for the necessary arrangements to be made for you on the day of the test. Difficulty reading and writing English. If you have difficulty reading or writing in English, you can choose to attempt a verbal, spoken, test with or without an interpreter. You can book a verbal test through any MVR office in urban areas. An interpreting service is provided by Interpreting and Translating Service NTIT Senti. If you are not an Australian resident or citizen, you may need to pay a fee directly to IT Senti for this service. Arrangements for verbal testing services can be made by calling 1300-654-628. Motor Vehicle Registry Road Users Handbook. DriveSafe NT. DriveSafe NT is a driver education and licensing program across the Northern Territory. DriveSafe NT equips Territorians with essential knowledge of road rules, safe driving practices, and attitudes. It provides access to professional, modern driver training, supervising drivers, and works towards being safer on our roads. DriveSafe NT gives participants various subsidies towards gaining their learner license and progressing to a provisional license, including course materials, classroom-based theory education, license fees, test fees, and writing English, subsidized driving lesson e-vouchers, St. John Ambulance NT online first aid course, first at scene, access to online tools to track and manage progress enrollment fees apply. 11. DriveSafe NT has been designed so that all elements of the program can be completed over six months in line with the current minimum learner license period. However, participants can take up to two years to complete the program. DriveSafe NT participants are encouraged to take their time and get as much driving practice as they can before continuing to their provisional license and completing the program. You can still enroll in DriveSafe NT if you already have your learner license. For more information about the DriveSafe NT program, visit www.drivesafe.nt.gov.au, call 1-800-121-411 or email drivesafeinfo.dipl.nt.gov.au, nt.gov.au. License Restrictions for Class C Learners 
As well as complying with all road rules and traffic laws, there are some additional requirements for Class C learner license holders. Blood slash breath alcohol concentration, BAC slash BRAC your BAC slash BRAC must be zero. This means you must not have any alcohol in your system when you drive a vehicle. Displaying L plates, L plates must be clearly displayed on the front and back of the vehicle. If towing a trailer, an L plate must also be displayed on the back of the trailer. License. You must carry your learner license at all times while driving. License class. You can only learn to drive the type of vehicle allowed by your license class. Mobile phone. You must not use any function of a mobile phone while driving, including hands-free or loudspeaker options. Visual display unit. You must not drive a vehicle that has a television or visual display unit, VDU, operating and visible to you or drivers of other vehicles. Seat belts. You must make sure all people in the vehicle are wearing seat belts or approved restraints. Speed limit. You must not drive faster than 80 kilometers per hour at any time, regardless of the sign posted speed limit. And you must observe the speed limit where it is below 80 kilometers per hour. Supervision. A person who has a full Australian license, not a learner or a provisional license or an overseas license, must sit next to you at all times. Learning to drive. Driving lessons. How you are taught to drive is extremely important. For that reason, some lessons with a professional driving instructor who is aware of modern driving practices and training techniques could be helpful. All professional driving instructors in the NT that provide driver training in return for payment must be registered. Driving instructors are bound by the conditions of registration and the code of practice for driving instructors in the Northern Territory. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook For your own peace of mind, important factors in selecting a driving instructor include making sure the instructor holds professional indemnity and public liability insurance and is fully qualified to provide the training you seek. It is important that you find a driving instructor you are comfortable learning with. If for any reason you are not comfortable with your chosen driving instructor, you can change instructors. Supervised Driving Practice while you are a learner driver, it is strongly recommended that you get as much supervised driving practice as possible before going out on the road solo. Even if you are having professional driving lessons, you will benefit from supervised driving between your lessons. Ask parents, relatives, or friends who are fully licensed to take you out to practice each new driving skill. That way, you can maximize the benefits from each paid lesson and minimize the cost of getting your license. The supervising driver must obey the following rules at all times while the learner is driving the vehicle, including parking practice. Hold a current full driver license, not provisional. Be seated immediately next to the learner. Fully supervise the learner and take responsibility for the learner's actions. The licensed driver is deemed to be the driver for most legal purposes. 13. Professional driving instructors must have a blood slash breath alcohol concentration, BAC slash BRAC, of zero. Fully licensed supervising drivers must have a BAC slash BRAC of lower than 0.05%. Although there is no minimum number of supervised driving hours required before a learner can get their provisional license in the NT, learners are encouraged to get as much practice as they can before moving on to driving unsupervised nt.gov.au L-plate rules L-plates consist of a black letter L against a yellow background. The minimum size for L-plates is shown in the diagram. L-plates must be displayed and clearly visible on the front and rear of the vehicle, rear only for motorcycles. If you're towing a trailer, an L-plate must also be displayed on the back of the trailer. The L-plates must be easily seen by other road users and must not block or obscure the driver's view. It is recommended that L-plates are displayed vertically on the vehicle, not facing upwards on the bonnet or boot. Brackets for mounting L-plates next to the number plate can be purchased at most automotive supply stores. Roof-mounted L-plates do not replace the L-plates that must be displayed at the front and rear of the vehicle. Where an L-plate is displayed in the window of the vehicle, make sure that the angle of the window, any tinting or louvers on the window or anything on the outside of the vehicle, like spoilers or items in the tray of a UDA,
do not obscure other road users' clear view of the L-plate. L-plates must not be displayed when the driver of the vehicle is not a learner driver. Appropriate placement of L-plates on a car. Motor Vehicle Registry Road Users Handbook 15. How to obtain a Class C provisional license. To obtain a Class C provisional license, your PS, you must successfully complete a practical driving test. This is a formal assessment to confirm your driving ability meets the minimum requirements to drive unsupervised. To attempt a practical driving test you must have held your learner license for a continuous period of at least six months immediately prior to your test, your current NT learner license with you, a registered and roadworthy vehicle of the correct classification for the test, the practical driving test, Getting your provisional license is based on your ability to demonstrate consistent and appropriate use of the system of vehicle control. You must understand the major controls of a motor vehicle, complete a number of low-speed maneuvers, be safe and efficient while driving, have good observation skills, and be able to deal with hazards. More information about the system of vehicle control and the practical driving test can be found in the Learner Driver's Guide and A Guide to the Driving Test. Both publications are available online at nt.gov.au. Where can I do my test? You must attempt your practical driving test at a location nearest to your usual place of residence. In special circumstances, you can ask for an exemption from this requirement if you can demonstrate an alternative location within the Northern Territory. For example, if you are studying or employed full-time away from home. When can I sit a test? You can sit the practical test when you and your supervising driver or driving instructor believe your driving skills are adequate. You must have held a learner license for at least six consecutive months before you can sit a practical driving test. You must present your practical test sheet and learner license to the MVR to upgrade your license to a provisional before your learner license expires. License Restrictions for Provisional Class C Drivers in the Northern Territory, a provisional license is for two years, one year if you are 25 or older. If at any time during your provisional period your license is canceled, the full provisional period starts all over. nt.gov.au Again on reissue. If your provisional license is suspended, the period of suspension will be added onto your provisional license period. In some cases, the courts could order an additional provisional period when the license holder is convicted of certain traffic offenses. As well as complying with all road rules and traffic laws, there are additional conditions for provisional Class C license holders. Blood slash breath alcohol concentration, BAC slash BRAC your BAC must be zero. This means you must not have any alcohol in your system when you drive a vehicle. Displaying P-plates, P-plates must be clearly displayed on the front and rear of the vehicle. The letter P must not be hidden. If towing a trailer, a P-plate must also be displayed on the back of the trailer. License. You must carry your provisional license at all times while driving. Mobile phone. You must not use any function of a mobile phone or other communication device while driving, including hands-free or loudspeaker options. Visual display unit. You must not drive a vehicle that has a television or visual display unit, VDU, operating and visible to you or drivers of other vehicles. Seatbelts. You must make sure all people in the vehicle are wearing seatbelts or approved restraints. Speed limit. You must not drive faster than 100 kilometers per hour, regardless of the sign posted speed limit, and you must observe the speed where it is below 100 kilometers per hour. Supervising a learner. You must not supervise a learner driver. P-plate rules. A P-plate consists of a red letter P against a white background. The minimum size for P-plates is shown in the diagram. P-plates must be displayed and clearly visible at the front and rear of the vehicle, rear only for motorcycles. The P-plates must be easily seen by other road users and must not block or obstruct the driver's view. It is recommended that P-plates are displayed vertically on the vehicle, not facing upwards on the bonnet or boot. Brackets for mounting P-plates next to the number plate can be purchased at most automotive supply stores. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook Where a P-plate is displayed in the window of the vehicle, make sure that the angle of the window, 
any tinting or louvers on the window or anything on the outside of the vehicle, like spoilers or items in the tray of Aouda. Do not obscure other road users' clear view of the P-plate. If you are towing a trailer, a P-plate must also be displayed on the back of the trailer. P-plates must not be displayed when the driver of the vehicle is not a provisional driver. Appropriate placement of P-plates on a car. 17. If you pass your driving test in an automatic vehicle, if you pass your driving test in a vehicle with automatic transmission, you can only drive an automatic vehicle during the first 12 months of your provisional license. You can drive a manual vehicle during this first 12 months if you are supervised by a full license holder. You cannot drive a manual vehicle unsupervised until the automatic vehicle condition has been removed from your license. You can do this after 12 months at an MVR office. If you want to drive a manual vehicle unaccompanied before the 12-month period is up, you must pass the driving test in a manual vehicle with a foot-operated clutch. z slash BRAC, zero blood slash breath alcohol concentration, condition. After completing your provisional period, you must continue to observe the zero blood slash breath alcohol concentration, BAC slash BRAC, requirements for a further 12 months or until you turn 25, whichever is sooner. Road safety. Keep your child safe. Use the right child restraint. Children under seven years must be restrained in an approved child restraint or booster seat whenever they are traveling in a car. Always use the right child car restraint appropriate for your child's age and size. Much. Motor Vehicle Registry Road Users Handbook 19. Northern Territory road users are three times more likely to suffer an injury or fatality on our roads than any other state or territory in Australia. In the 10 years from 2007 to 2017, an average of 46 people died and 537 people were seriously injured each year on Northern Territory roads. A road accident is never an accident. It is the result of the combination of road user, road environment, risk factors and decisions made that result in a crash that, in turn, results in trauma. Crashes are not uncontrollable events, but have definite causes and, by implication, can be avoided. 90% of all road crashes are the result of driver behaviors, not the vehicle or environment. Key factors that contribute to crashes and the severity of crashes include vehicle safety, roads and roadsides, vehicle speeds and road user behavior, usually seatbelts, alcohol, and fatigue. Are you the safest driver that you can be? Ask yourself the following questions. Do you have a current and valid driver's license for the type of vehicle you will be driving? Do you have any medical condition or are you taking any medication that could affect your ability to operate a vehicle? Are you familiar with the vehicle you will be driving? Have you had any alcohol or taken any substances that could affect your driving? Are you capable of driving in unusual or hazardous conditions such as off-road? Is your vehicle roadworthy and registered? Have you checked the road conditions? For longer journeys, do you have a trip plan and have you thought about how you will manage fatigue? Do a self-assessment each time you drive and if you are not fit to drive, don't. Distractions. Driving or riding is a complex task that requires the use and coordination of many skills. There is much more to driving or riding than being able to make a vehicle go, stop, or turn a corner. It is important to stay focused while driving and avoid becoming distracted. If you become distracted while driving, you could cause a crash. Distractions can include talking with passengers, using a mobile phone, tuning the radio or changing CDs, listening to music, smoking, eating or drinking, shaving, applying cosmetics, or reading a map. Drivers can also become distracted by events happening outside the car. nt.gov.au Mobile phones Drivers can only use a mobile phone while driving to make or receive an audio phone call or as a driver's aid, e.g. using your phone for navigation. This is only permitted if the phone is secured in a commercially designed mount fixed to the vehicle or can be operated by the driver without touching any part of the phone. Other similar communications that require you to touch your phone, including emails, text messages, video calls, video messages are not permitted. You can use a handheld mobile phone while your vehicle is parked in a designated parking place. 
Learner and provisional license holders are not permitted to use a mobile phone in any form while driving. This includes hands-free or loudspeaker options and texting, television receivers, and visual display units. You must not drive a vehicle that has a television or visual display unit operating and visible to you or drivers of other vehicles. This does not apply to a driver's aid in a secure mounting, such as vehicle systems equipment, dispatch system, ticket issuing machine, navigational system, or rear view screens linked to reversing cameras. Speeding. Speeding is traveling at a speed greater than the sign posted speed limit. You can also be speeding if you are traveling too fast for the driving conditions. If conditions are less than ideal, for example, rain, heavy traffic, or at night, you could be speeding even if you're driving at or below the sign posted speed limit. There is no such thing as safe speeding. Some people think that exceeding the speed limit by 5 to 10 kilometers per hour is acceptable speeding. This is a dangerous way to think. Research has shown that even a small increase in speed can greatly increase the risk of a crash. 5 kilometers per hour faster means 32 kilometers per hour on impact. Two cars are traveling on a road with a speed limit of 60 kilometers per hour. One car is traveling at 65 kilometers per hour and the other 60 kilometers per hour. A truck unexpectedly appears across the road 38 meters ahead and both drivers apply the brakes at the same point. The vehicle traveling at 65 kilometers per hour will hit the truck at 32 kilometers per hour and will likely suffer extensive damage. The slower vehicle will be traveling at 5 kilometers per hour on impact and will suffer much less severe damage. The green car, car A, was traveling at 60 kilometers per hour, the speed limit, and hits the truck at 5 kilometers per hour. The blue car, car B, was traveling at 65 kilometers per hour and hits the truck at 32 kilometers per hour. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook Speed Limit Signs Speed limit signs show the maximum speed you are allowed to drive in good conditions. You must not go faster than the speed limit, but you can drive slower if you wish. Driving needlessly slower than the sign posted speed limit and conditions can be just as dangerous as speeding and is an offense. Slow down in poor conditions. Driving conditions vary and can change quickly, so it is important to slow down when road, weather, and light conditions are poor. These conditions also include road surfaces that are affected by gravel, oil, sand, ice, mud, or water, the time of day, the light, at night, and in fog, crests or curves, and when vision is limited. On rural and outback roads and highways, look out for stock and wildlife that can, and do, wander onto the road. Driving on unsealed roads. Take extra care when driving on unsealed roads, dirt, and gravel. Vehicles take longer to stop and are harder to control on unsealed roads. In these conditions, all vehicles are at risk of skidding, sliding, or rolling over. Dust on unsealed roads can severely reduce visibility and hide ruts and potholes. Putting your headlights on will help other vehicles to see you through the dust. Maintain a low speed because the road conditions can change quickly and without warning. 21. Alcohol, drugs, medications, and driving. Alcohol, drugs, and medications can significantly affect your driving skills and increase your risk of having a crash. It is illegal to drive while under the influence of alcohol or drugs, including some over-the-counter and prescription medicines. There is a great similarity between the drinking driver and the drug driver. Both are usually not aware of any impairment to their driving skills, alertness, capability, vision, or reactions. As a driver, you need to be alert and able to concentrate on what you are doing so that you can react to whatever is happening on the road around you. When your doctor prescribes a drug, you should ask whether it could affect your driving. Read the label on prescription medication and over-the-counter products to check that they do not contain alcohol, also known as ethanol, or a warning about possible effects on your driving ability. nt.gov.au How Alcohol Affects Driving Skills no one can drink alcohol without it affecting their ability to drive a vehicle or ride a motorcycle or bicycle. You do not have to be drunk to be dangerous on the road. Although you might feel or look all right, your driving ability will be affected if you have been drinking alcohol. 
Alcohol is quickly absorbed into the bloodstream, where it travels to all parts of the body, including the brain. When it reaches the brain, alcohol acts like an anesthetic. It slows down and gradually dulls parts of the brain that are needed for driving. Once alcohol is in the bloodstream, its effects on the brain cannot be stopped or controlled. The only thing that will reduce a person's blood alcohol concentration is time. Effects of alcohol include Slower reaction time to triggers requiring action, e.g. a car approaching from a side street, traffic lights changing, or people crossing the road. Poor judgment about your speed and the speed of other vehicles and in judging distances, e.g. other cars might seem further away than they really are. Observation skills, such as visual attention and hearing, are reduced. After drinking alcohol, drivers tend to focus on the road straight ahead and ignore what is happening in their side vision, e.g. they won't hear. Or see things like cars approaching from side streets or people crossing the road. Poor coordination when trying to do more than one thing at a time, especially in an emergency. Confidence up, judgment down, leading you to believe you are okay to drive. You might take risks that you would not normally take. This can be extremely dangerous because you may not be aware of how much your skills have deteriorated. Some people might show these effects after drinking only small amounts of alcohol. Others might display little or no change in their appearance or behavior. Regardless of this, no one can drink alcohol without it affecting their ability to drive in some way. Blood Alcohol Concentration, BAC The level of alcohol in your blood can be measured. This measure is called blood alcohol concentration, BAC, and it is measured by analyzing a sample of blood or by using a breath analyzing instrument, breathalyzer, to measure the level of alcohol in the breath. The results are expressed as a ratio of the mass of alcohol in grams per volume, 100 milliliters of blood. In other words, a BAC of 0.05 means that there is 0.05 of a gram of alcohol in each 100 milliliters of your blood. Breath alcohol concentration, BRAC. Just like BAC, the level of alcohol in your breath can be measured. The measure is called breath alcohol concentration, BRAC, and is measured by analyzing a sample of your breath. The results are expressed as a ratio of the mass of alcohol in grams per volume, 210 liters of exhaled breath. In other words, a BRAC of 0.05 means that there is 0.05 of a gram of alcohol in each 210 liters of breath. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook How to Calculate Your Alcohol Level There are a number of reasons why it is difficult to have a general rule to determine a person's blood alcohol level without testing. People register different blood alcohol concentrations depending on their body size and shape, whether they are male or female, how quickly they drank the alcohol, how quickly their body gets rid of the alcohol, if they have eaten any food. One person drinking a set amount of alcohol can also reach a different BAC slash BRAC on different occasions. As a guide, males drinking more than two standard drinks in the first hour could cause their BAC slash BRAC to go over 0.05 and only one standard drink per hour after that. We'll keep it above 0.05. For females, any more than one standard drink per hour could cause their BAC slash BRAC to go over 0.05. Remember that the estimated BAC slash BRAC for a standard drink is only a rough guide. The effect of one standard drink on someone's BAC slash BRAC will vary from individual to individual. How quickly does your BAC slash BRAC fall? Approximately 10% of the alcohol passes out of the body, unchanged, through breath, urine, and sweat. Most of the alcohol in the bloodstream, more than 90%. 23 is broken down by the liver. As a general rule, it takes the liver about one hour to dispose of the alcohol in one standard drink. This means that the BAC slash BRAC drops by about 0.015 per hour. While this amount differs, from person to person, a BAC slash BRAC of 0.05 will take approximately three to four hours to reach zero. There is nothing you can do to make the liver work any faster. Only time will help you to sober up. Nothing can speed up this process. It is a myth that black coffee, a cold shower, exercise, fresh air, 
Vomiting or home remedies will make a person more sober. What is a standard drink? A standard drink contains 10 grams of alcohol, the amount an average healthy liver can break down in one hour. Cans, bottles, and casks state on the label how many standard drinks they contain. Care should be taken when drinking because glass and container sizes vary and, therefore, the number of standard drinks can vary. Mixing alcohol with other drugs. The worst thing you can do when using any type of drug, including prescription and illegal drugs, is drink alcohol. Many drugs will have a different and often worse effect on your ability to drive if you take or use them and drink alcohol at the same time. The effects of combining drugs and alcohol vary depending on a person's physical condition, activity level, the type of drug, and the amount of alcohol and drug consumed. nt.gov.au When alcohol is combined with drugs, the effects can be completely unpredictable and dangerous. When can you be breath tested? The police can breath test drivers at any time. Police can also test drivers who have been involved in a crash, have committed certain traffic offenses, approach a random breath testing station, behave in a way that indicates a driving impairment. Generally, the police will first require the driver to blow into a breath screening device, often referred to as a breathalyzer, which will indicate if alcohol is present. If you have a positive reading, or if it appears that you are obviously affected by alcohol, you will be required to submit to a formal alcohol evidentiary test. You may also be requested to provide a blood sample for further testing. If you refuse the tests or are over the legal BAC slash BRAC limit you could be charged with. Driving under the influence, DUI. Exceeding the legal BAC slash BRAC limit. Refusing a breath slash blood test. How does the breath test work? If there is any alcohol in the bloodstream, a small amount passes through the lining of the lungs into the breath and is exhaled. As this bears a fixed relationship to the amount of alcohol in the blood, the BAC slash BRAC can be easily calculated by taking and measuring a breath sample. There is nothing that will reduce the effectiveness of breath testing by these devices. Some people try to lower their BAC slash BRAC reading by covering up the smell of alcohol on their breath by using breath fresheners, smoking, or eating mints. However, this does not change the amount of alcohol in their breath, and their BAC slash BRAC will not be reduced. Fatigue. Fatigue is a term used to describe the feeling of being sleepy, tired, or exhausted. It can lead to impaired judgment, slower reaction times, and decreased ability to control a vehicle. This is your body's way of telling you that you need to stop and rest or sleep. The best way to avoid driver fatigue is to make sure you have plenty of sleep before you set off. The only way to treat driver fatigue once you have already started driving is to stop and rest until you are refreshed. Driver fatigue can be just as dangerous as drink driving or excessive speeding. Although it is difficult to identify and measure fatigue in fatal crashes, it is widely believed that fatigue is under, recorded as a factor in road fatalities. Facts about fatigue. Fatigue fact one, fatigue is generally associated with the hours when you would normally be asleep. The risk of having a fatal fatigue crash is four times greater between the hours of 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. because this is when your body is programmed to sleep. Your core temperature falls and your blood pressure drops so that at night, and to some extent, during the afternoon, your ability to perform. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook Tasks can be severely impaired. This includes your ability to drive. Your circadian rhythms, natural sleep pattern, cause this type of fatigue and there is nothing you can do to stop it. If you drive at night or early in the morning, your risk of driver fatigue is increased. Fatigue Fact 2 the average person needs about eight hours of sleep each night to function normally. Teenagers need even more. When you reduce the number of hours you sleep at night, you start to accumulate what is called a sleep debt. The only way to treat your sleep debt is by sleeping. Fatigue Fact 3. Fatigue is caused by how long you have been awake. It is estimated that the risk of crashing after being awake for 17 hours is equivalent to having a BAC slash BRAC of 0.05. After 24 hours, it is equivalent to a BAC slash BRAC of 0.10, which increases your risk of having a crash by 10 times. 
Fatigue Fact 4 You have a high risk of suffering from fatigue after you wake up when you are still feeling groggy. This is called sleep inertia and generally lasts between 15 and 30 minutes. Wait until you have overcome sleep inertia before you drive. Fatigue Fact 5 the risk of driver fatigue increases with the amount of time you have spent driving. To reduce fatigue, you should aim to stop for 15 minutes every two hours. But remember, the only cure for fatigue is a good night's sleep. Signs of driver fatigue. Driver fatigue severely impairs your concentration and judgment it slows your reaction time. In fact, some of. 25. The effects of fatigue are as dangerous as the effects of alcohol on your driving. As you drive, watch for early warning signs of driver fatigue. Yawning. Poor concentration. Tired or sore eyes. Restlessness. Drowsiness. Slow reactions. Boredom. Feeling irritable. Making fewer and larger steering corrections. Missing road signs. Having difficulty staying in the lane. Not remembering the last few kilometers or minutes of driving. If you notice these signs, it is time to stop. Revive. Survive. Regular breaks every two hours will help avoid fatigue. Passenger safety. Passengers can be a positive influence in your vehicle by helping you to identify hazards and risky situations. They can change CDs or act as a navigator when you are traveling somewhere new. nt.gov.au Two or more passengers, however, could have a negative influence and affect your driving. The noise and behavior of passengers can distract you from the task of driving. Some passengers might encourage you to take risks like speeding or breaking road rules and try to pressure you into high-risk behavior. It is your responsibility to drive safely and to obey the road rules. This could mean limiting the number of passengers you carry to make sure you stay in control. You could also discuss your expectations with your passengers before you set off. Keeping inside the vehicle. All occupants of a vehicle must keep all parts of their body inside the vehicle at all times. The only person allowed to extend an arm out of the window is the driver and only if they need to give a hand signal to change direction, stop, or slow down. You should only use hand signals if your indicators are not working, not clearly visible, or your vehicle does not have indicator lights. Do not drive if any part of a passenger's body is outside the vehicle. There are passengers in or on a trailer, including a caravan or boat. Any part of your body is outside the vehicle unless you are giving a hand signal to change direction, stop, or to slow down. Overcrowding is dangerous. It is dangerous and illegal to have too many people in your vehicle, such as people sitting on the floor or on other people's laps. The number of passengers in a vehicle cannot be more than the number of seatbelts in the vehicle. All passengers must be seated and wearing seatbelts or other approved restraints. Seatbelts Drivers are responsible to make sure all passengers are properly restrained in a seatbelt or approved child restraint. There are fines and demerit points for a driver. Who is not wearing a seatbelt or who does not ensure that passengers use seatbelts where available? Passengers age 16 years and over who do not use a seatbelt will also be fined. Child restraints. Child restraints help to prevent serious injury and death to children involved in a crash. All children under the age of 7 are required to travel in a standards Australia-approved child restraint suitable for. Motor Vehicle Registry Road Users Handbook. Their age and size. It is mandatory when carrying a child in a vehicle to have the correct restraint for the child. See Section 5 General Road Rules for the legal requirements on child restraints. Night driving. When driving at night, you need to be able to see and to be seen clearly by others. Compared with daylight driving, visibility at night is extremely limited. Even with the best street lighting combined with the most efficient headlights, your ability to see at night is significantly reduced. Before driving at night, make sure you have good lights, clean windows, isolated patches of light, and then dark areas will strain your eyes and cause them to constantly adjust, which makes it difficult to see. In poorly lit areas, always reduce your speed and maintain a careful lookout for both pedestrians and cyclists. If there is no street lighting and no other vehicles close by then you can use your high beam. You must change to low. 27. 
Beam as soon as you see an approaching vehicle so you do not dazzle the driver. If the light of an approaching vehicle dazzles you, slow down and look at the edge of the road until your eyes have adjusted or the vehicle has passed. If a vehicle approaches you from behind with their high beam lights on, you can adjust your internal mirrors to avoid being dazzled. Duty of care. No matter what the circumstances, the responsibility of each road user is to avoid crashing or causing a crash. A road user can be held accountable for a crash even if a road rule was not broken. The traffic laws and regulations are designed to ensure that the traffic moves in an orderly and safe manner. People, road users, must not walk, drive, or ride a motor vehicle, bicycle, or animal. Without due care. Without consideration for other persons. If you are involved in a court proceeding, it is your responsibility to show that you took every reasonable care to avoid a crash or that you were proceeding in a reasonable manner. All road users have a duty of care. We share the roads. We share the safety. nt.gov.au If you are involved in a road crash. If you are involved in a crash that causes injury to a person or animal or that results in damage to property, you must take the following action. Stop immediately. It is against the law to fail to stop after a crash. Penalties can include license disqualification and prison. See if anyone is injured. A person involved in a crash must stop and render all possible assistance and, if necessary and possible, get a message to police, fire, and emergency services. Call 000. Prevent further crashes. Unless it is necessary to avoid further injury, like danger of fire, explosion, traffic, or burns from hot pavement, do not move seriously injured or unconscious people until trained help arrives. Note or mark the position of your vehicle on the roadway, then move it clear of traffic if you can. Ask bystanders to warn approaching vehicles. Personal safety. Do not stand on the roadway. Always move to the footpath or to a place of safety. Give the required particulars to other people. Give your name and address, the registration number, and any other information necessary to identify the vehicle you were driving slash riding, and the name and address of the owner of the vehicle if it is not yours, to any police officer, any other driver slash rider, any injured person, the owner of any damaged property, any representative of these people. Obtain all details of the crash including estimated speeds of all vehicles, road and weather conditions, description of the damage and injuries, diagrams of positions and directions of vehicles, the names and addresses of witnesses, report the crash to police, if any person is killed or injured, if damage to any property, including an animal, is caused, if, for any reason, you do not give the required particulars to other people, if another driver's slash rider's particulars are not given to you. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook. Reports to the police must be made as soon as possible and only in exceptional circumstances, such as having to go to hospital, not later than 24 hours after the crash. You must give the same information to the police as you have to give to other people involved, as well as the date, time, and place of the crash. The police will also ask for details of other people and property involved. The police are entitled to ask you questions about the positions and speeds of vehicles before and at the time of collision. You are required to answer these questions unless doing so would incriminate you of any offense. If you witness or see a road crash. During your lifetime as a driver, it is likely that you will see crashes happen or be first to arrive on the scene of a crash. Your actions on these occasions are vital. You might be able to save a life, prevent further injury, phone for help, or provide valuable assistance as a witness. While there is no legal requirement to stop unless you are involved in the crash, all drivers should lend assistance as responsible citizens and road users. If the situation is clearly in hand, keep going at a safe speed. Do not stop or slow down to have a look. This is extremely dangerous. People that stop at crashes or slow down unnecessarily can add to the congestion, get in the way of others providing assistance, or cause another crash. 29. Important things to remember if you are first on the scene of a crash. Do not remove a person from a vehicle unless they 
are in immediate danger, e.g. if there is risk of explosion or fire. Check injured people's breathing and, if necessary, clear their airway by clearing any obstructions and draining any fluid from their mouth and gently tilting their head back. Control bleeding by applying direct pressure on the wound. Use a clean cloth or clothing, if possible. Remember the possibility of spinal injuries. Keep the patient as still as possible. Keep the patient as comfortable as possible. Provide shade, warm blanket, etc. until medical assistance arrives. Call 000 for emergency services assistance. nt.gov.au First aid and further assistance. Early intervention can save lives and lessen the impact of injuries. That makes first aid skills valuable in road crash situations, as well as if someone is involved in an accident elsewhere. First aid courses are available from the Northern Territory branches of both St. John Ambulance and the Red Cross. St. John Ambulance NT has also developed First at Scene, an online first aid course specifically to teach the skills required to apply first aid at the scene of a crash. You can learn the basic skills and test your first aid knowledge at www.firstatscene.com.au. While you must stop if you are involved in a crash, if you come upon a crash and do not wish to stop and help hasn't already arrived, phone 000. Sharing the road with pedestrians. As a driver, you are legally required to give way to pedestrians at crossings and when entering or leaving a driveway. However, you should always be prepared to stop for pedestrians. Particularly vulnerable pedestrians are the elderly, children, pedestrians affected by alcohol or drugs. Remember to drive slowly and be prepared to stop at and near pedestrian crossings or traffic lights. Wherever you see children walking, playing, or riding bikes. When entering or leaving a driveway. Near clubs, hotels, and restaurants. Near shopping centers and other busy places. Near schools, particularly when children are arriving or leaving. Where there are parked cars or stopped buses, especially school buses. At intersections where pedestrians cross. Where special events are being held. When visibility is poor, such as in rain, fog, at night, or dawn or dusk. When approaching a stationary bus and passengers are getting off or crossing the road. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook. When pedestrians cross the road away from pedestrian crossings. When pedestrians gather in large crowds. Safety Tips for Pedestrians. Before crossing the road, stop, look, listen, and think. Never assume that an approaching vehicle will stop for you. Avoid crossing between parked cars or in front of buses. Cross at pedestrian crossings or traffic lights if possible. Keep to the left side on shared bicycles slash pedestrian paths. Do not block out all surrounding sounds with head slash earphones. Do not use a mobile phone when crossing a road. Wear light or bright colored clothing at night or in reduced visibility conditions. Children up to eight years old should hold an adult's hand on the footpath, in the car park, or when crossing the road. Children up to 10 years old should be supervised in the traffic environment and hold an adult's hand when crossing the road. If you have been drinking, arrange a sober bob rather than walking. Do not cause a traffic hazard or unreasonably obstruct the path of a road user or other pedestrian. 31. Pedestrians must use footpaths and nature strips where they are provided. Where this is not possible, keep to the side of the road and walk in the direction that faces oncoming traffic. Sharing the road with motorized wheelchairs. A person using a motorized wheelchair that cannot travel over 10 kilometers per hour is defined as a pedestrian. Drivers should be aware that motorized wheelchairs have the same rights and responsibilities as pedestrians. Motorized wheelchairs can be difficult to see because they are generally below the height of an average pedestrian. Although they can move faster than pedestrians, they are much slower than other motorized vehicles using the road. As a driver, you should allow for these differences and take extra care. nt.gov.au Sharing the road with trucks and buses. Trucks and buses are usually much larger than a standard vehicle. They are longer, heavier, and more powerful. 
to share the roads with them safely, keep the following basic principles in mind. Allow more room for heavy vehicles to stop. Heavy vehicles need a long distance to stop. If you are approaching an intersection or other hazard where you could be required to stop and a truck or buses. Approaching, do not pull into their lane because it might not have enough room to stop safely. Turning trucks and buses sometimes take up more than one lane at corners or on roundabouts. Make sure you give them enough room to turn. Do not assume they can stay completely in their lane. Safety tips. Do not pull in front of trucks when coming up to traffic lights. Do not overtake them when they are turning. Do not drive in the blind spot of heavy vehicles. Refer image below. Allow more room for trucks and buses to turn. Crashes involving buses and trucks are more likely to cause serious injury or death, so take particular care around these vehicles. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook Sharing the Road with Cyclists Bicycles are classed as vehicles and, therefore, cyclists have the same rights and responsibilities as all other road users. They deserve the same respect and courtesy. Importantly, cyclists are vulnerable road users, so when driving, always keep a lookout for them. When getting out of your vehicle, always check your rear view and side mirrors to avoid opening your door into a cyclist. It is an offense to cause a hazard to other road users by carelessly opening a car door or leaving it open, and you could be responsible for any injury or damage caused. Cyclists are allowed to ride side by side, up to two abreast, on the road, so please be patient and overtake only when safe to do so. Cyclists cannot stop as fast as other vehicles, so never cut in front of a bicycle or turn in front of a cyclist traveling on the road shoulder. It is an offense to cut in front of cyclists at intersections. Do not overtake a cyclist if you are planning to turn left at an intersection close by. Be patient and wait until the cyclist is safely out of the intersection. Wider the rider. When traveling 60 kilometers per hour or less, you must leave a minimum of one meter passing distance when overtaking a cyclist. When traveling over 60 kilometers per hour, you must leave a minimum of one and half meters passing distance when overtaking a cyclist. If two cyclists are riding side by side, overtake the cyclists as you would a car. Remember that the faster. 33. You are traveling the more your tailwind will affect the cyclist when you pass them. Where the road or lane is damaged or narrow, cyclists may need to come into the road lane to ride safely. Be prepared to slow down and allow the cyclist to travel away from the curb. Only overtake the cyclist when safe to do so. Cyclists are permitted to use the right lane to turn right or perform a U-turn at a roundabout. Remember, you must leave at least 1 meter when passing a cyclist and 1.5 meters if you are traveling faster than 60 kilometers per hour. Safety tips. Never assume a cyclist is traveling slowly. Do not cut in front of cyclists. Do not turn in front of a cyclist traveling on the road shoulder. Check for cyclists in blind spots, at corners, driveways, and intersections. When exiting your vehicle, use your left hand to open the door. This will force you to scan for cyclists. Always allow cyclists room to move and only overtake them when safe to do so. Dip your lights when approaching or overtaking a cyclist at night. Be aware of young cyclists who can be unpredictable and lack road sense. Be especially careful around schools in the early mornings and afternoons. Be patient. Consider the cyclist's safety and your duty of care to avoid crashing. nt.gov.au be patient. Consider the cyclist's safety and your duty of care to avoid crashing. A driver may pass or overtake a bicycle when it is safe to do so and if the motorist has a clear view of the approaching traffic. Only when passing or overtaking a bicycle can motorists drive on or over continuous lines or drive on a painted island. The helmet must meet Australian standard AS slash NZS 2063. The helmet must be properly fitted and fastened. This rule does not apply if the cyclist is aged 17 or over and riding on a public place or path that is separated from the road. However, it is always recommended that cyclists wear a helmet when riding in the territory. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook Additional Road Rules for Cyclists 
Just like drivers of a motor vehicle, cyclists need a sound understanding of the road rules and must ride in a manner that other road users will be expecting. When riding a bicycle, you're required to abide by all the rules and regulations that govern the drivers of other vehicles. Cyclists must ensure they have a correctly fitted, fastened and approved helmet on their head, including passengers, at all times when riding. On the road, in the Northern Territory, this rule does not apply if the cyclist is aged 17 or over and is riding on a public place or path that is separated from the road. However, it is always recommended that cyclists wear a helmet when riding in the territory. At least one effective brake on their bicycle. A working bell or horn on their bicycle. A red reflector on the rear of their bicycle. A white reflector visible for at least 50 meters from the front of their bicycle. Cyclists must Maintain control of the bicycle at all times. Ride on the left side of the road. Ride in a predictable and considerate manner. Ride with at least one hand on the handlebars. 35. Ride the bicycle the way it has been designed to be ridden. Ensure all passengers sit on a seat designed for them. Not carry more people than the bicycle is designed to carry. Signal when turning right or merging into the right lane. Give way to pedestrians and other vehicles when entering a road. Stop and give way to any vehicle exiting a roundabout. Always use the on-road bike lane when riding on the road, and there is one available. Not ride alongside more than one other cyclist on a road, except to overtake other cyclists when safe to do so. Keep to the left when using a footpath or shared pedestrian slash bicycle path and give way to pedestrians. Not be towed by another vehicle. Not ride within 2 meters of the rear of a moving motor vehicle continuously for more than 200 meters. Not lead an animal on a bicycle from a leash or any other kind of leading device. Cyclists may ride slowly across a road at a children's crossing, pedestrian crossing, or marked foot crossing while giving way to pedestrians. Cyclists may ride across a signalized crossing only if the crossing is showing a green bicycle and or green pedestrian crossing light nt.gov.au. It is an offense to ride with both hands off the handlebars or feet off the pedals, or to carry any load that prevents you from having control. You must ride as near as possible to the far left side of the road. It is illegal and dangerous to ride on the right-hand side of the road into oncoming traffic. Cyclists can turn right at an intersection by making a hook turn unless there is a sign to say that it is prohibited. At night or in hazardous weather conditions, cyclists must ride with a white light that can be seen from at least 200 meters from the front of the bicycle, a red light visible for at least 200 meters from the rear, a red reflector that is visible for at least 50 meters from the rear of the bicycle, Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook, Shared Paths, Bicycle Paths, and Bicycle Lanes. All paths in the Northern Territory are shared between pedestrians and bicycles unless a sign indicates otherwise. When riding on a shared path, you must keep to the left unless it is not possible to do so and give way to any pedestrian. When on a shared path and approaching someone from behind, slow down and sound your bell or horn to let them know you're passing. 37. Where a shared path crosses a road at a signalized intersection, Bicycle crossing lights can be installed to assist bike riders to cross the road in the same way that pedestrian lights assist pedestrians. Cyclists may ride across the crossing when the bicycle light is green. Vehicles turning through the crossing must give way to cyclists using the crossing when the bicycle light is green, in the same way that vehicles must give way to pedestrians when the pedestrian light is green. Only when cycling on the road, you must use the bicycle lane when there is one available. A bicycle lane can be identified by a road marking or a sign. Shared path sign bicycle only sign. You must not ride on a road or path if a no bicycle sign or road marking applies. Lane. Bicycle lane sign. No bicycle sign. nt.gov.au. Sharing the road with motorcycle riders. Like cyclists, motorcycle riders do not have a car around them to protect them from the impact of a crash, and they are also less stable than a car because they only have two wheels. 
Motorcycle riders are more likely to be killed in a road crash than people in a car, so drive carefully around them. Motorcyclists are most at risk. On busy city roads, at intersections and when changing lanes. On rural and outback roads and highways, when riding through bends. Safety tips for sharing the road with motorcyclists. When overtaking a rider, allow the same amount of space as you would when overtaking a car. Do not cut in front of a rider. They cannot stop as fast as a car. Allow extra space while driving near motorcycles because riders may need to slow down to avoid hazards such as flying debris, oil slicks, or potholes that a car could drive through. Look for motorcycle riders before you turn onto a road because they won't be as clearly visible as a car. Motorcycles can be easily hidden behind a truck or car, so check your side and rear view mirrors and the blind spot by looking over your shoulder before merging or changing lanes. Dip your lights when approaching or overtaking a rider at night. Lane filtering and on the handlebars. Motorcycle riders with an unrestricted class R license may safely lane filter between stationary or slow moving. Traffic traveling in the same direction, provided they do not exceed 30 kilometers per hour, and it is safe to do so. Lane splitting and edge filtering. Lane splitting and edge filtering is not safe and is illegal in the Northern Territory. Motor Vehicle Registry Road Users Handbook. Animals as Vehicles. Sharing the road safely. An animal-drawn vehicle or an animal that is being ridden is considered to be a vehicle under the road rules. A person riding an animal is considered a rider and, for most road rules, the term driver includes riders. When animals are ridden or animal-drawn vehicles are driven on the road or a road-related area, they must obey the same road rules as drivers of vehicles. Watch out for ridden, driven, or led horses. When you come across horse traffic, remember. Horses can be unpredictable, so slow down and give them plenty of room. Never sound your horn, rev your engine, or pass a horse at high speed. Slow down or stop if a rider looks to be having difficulty with a horse. 39. Most at risk. There are some specific road rules in relation to animals. You or your passengers must not lead an animal while driving a motor vehicle or riding a bicycle. At multi-lane roundabouts, riders of animals can turn right or do a U-turn from the left lane, but they must give way to any vehicle leaving the roundabout. Riders of animals must give way to pedestrians on a footpath or nature strip. Riders must not ride alongside more than one other rider unless they are overtaking other riders or droving stock. You must not ride an animal or drive an animal-drawn vehicle on a clear way in the hours when stopping. Is prohibited. Safe driving. Be alert. Be seen. Be safe. Motorcyclists are vulnerable road users. Protect yourself by wearing the correct safety gear and make sure you can be seen by other drivers. As a driver you share the road, it is vital for you to stay alert and be aware of motorcycles. Motor Vehicle Registry Road Users Handbook 41 Observation Skills The key to good observation skills is scanning. Scanning is keeping your eyes moving and checking for hazards in one area for a couple of seconds and then moving your eyes to another area. When scanning, look in the distance, at the road surface, to your left and right, regularly at your mirrors and instruments. Speed Management Skills Low-risk drivers drive at a speed that is within the speed limit and that will allow them to react and completely stop, if necessary, within the clear distance ahead. If you cannot see at least five seconds ahead, you must slow down. When you see potential hazards, slow down and prepare to stop. Examples of potential hazards are when pedestrians are close to the road or when other vehicles could turn in front of you. Slow down on wet or gravel roads where it will take longer for your vehicle to stop. Your brakes should be your first line of defense against road hazards. Avoid the impulse to swerve because you could lose control of the vehicle. When you need to brake, apply gentle pressure to the brake pedal to start with. This will activate your rear brake lights and warn other drivers about your intention to slow down or stop. Crash avoidance space, road positioning. 
A low-risk driver maintains what is called a crash avoidance space around the vehicle at all times. Crash avoidance space is simply the clear space needed around a vehicle to reduce or avoid the risk of a crash. The crash avoidance space is managed by the driver adjusting the vehicle's speed and position on the road. nt.gov.au Front crash avoidance space to determine the crash avoidance space to the front of the vehicle, you need to take into account two key factors, reaction time and response time. Reaction time is the time you as the driver needs to see the information, the hazard. Recognize what the information means. Decide on a response. Activate that response. A driver who is fit, concentrating and alert, and not distracted or affected by alcohol, drugs, or fatigue will still require about 1.5 seconds to react to a hazard. Response time is the time required to take action to avoid the hazard. Generally, at least 1.5 seconds is needed to respond. In most situations, braking should be the only response. Swerving is rarely appropriate because it can result in a more severe crash, such as a head-on collision if the driver swerves into the oncoming traffic. Therefore, you need a total of three seconds crash avoidance space, a three-second gap between your vehicle and the one you are following, to react and respond to a situation in front of you. You will need even longer in poor conditions, like in rain or darkness. How to calculate your crash avoidance space? To calculate a three-second crash avoidance space when following another vehicle, use this basic technique. As the rear of the vehicle in front of you passes an object at the side of the road, such as a power pole, tree, or sign, start a three-second count of 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. There should be three seconds before the front of your vehicle reaches the same object. Three seconds. Potential for something to move into the crash avoidance space. The three-second gap can also be used in situations where there is potential for something to move into your crash avoidance space. For example, when a car in an adjacent street could fail to give way and pull out in front of you. A safe, low-risk driver experienced in maintaining a three-second following distance is able to mentally judge a three-second crash avoidance space in front of their vehicle. If there is a chance that a hazard will enter your crash avoidance space, reduce your speed to create a buffer. It is necessary to maintain the crash avoidance space for all potentially hazardous situations, including blind corners and crests. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook Road Positioning Buffering Position your vehicle on the road to increase the crash avoidance space around all sides of your vehicle and reduce the risk of a crash, referred to as buffering. Buffering is a simple concept that really just means moving away from hazards. Buffering could include using the left or second lane rather than the right lane to reduce the risk from oncoming vehicles, moving to the left of your lane at the crest of a hill to create extra space between you and any vehicles or hazards that you might not be able to see on the other side of the hill, moving away from parked cars to avoid pedestrians and doors opening, moving to the right lane when passing hazards on the left side of your vehicle, crash avoidance space when stopped. When you are stopped, it is important to leave a crash avoidance space between vehicles. Making sure that there is a clear space between vehicles will reduce the risk of a crash from being pushed forward into the vehicle in front or from the vehicle in front rolling backwards. Stop in a position behind other vehicles that allows you enough space to steer around the vehicle in front if you need to. This will not always be practical. In some cases. 43. It might be safer to stop closer to the vehicle in front, such as when stopped in a turning lane to prevent blocking the flow of traffic in continuing lanes and avoid rear-end collisions. Crash avoidance space when entering traffic. When deciding when to enter or cross a line of traffic, such as when pulling into traffic or at an intersection, a safe driver will not impact on the crash avoidance space of other road users. This means that when entering a line of traffic, you should make sure there is enough space for you to enter the line of traffic and accelerate to reach the speed of the rest of the traffic without other road users needing to adjust their crash avoidance space. Crash avoidance space when entering traffic, turning left into flow of traffic. nt.gov.au 
Crash avoidance space when entering traffic, merging. Crash avoidance space when entering traffic, pulling out of car park. Crash avoidance space at intersections. When approaching and making a turn at an intersection, you must maintain your crash avoidance space and make sure your vehicle does not impact on the crash avoidance space of others. This can be done by positioning your vehicle correctly on the approach and when traveling through an intersection. When turning left, approach the intersection as far left as possible. On roads marked with lanes, this means from the left lane or any marked left turn lane. On unmarked roads, this means from as close to the left edge of the road as possible. Make the turn staying as far left as possible. On roads marked with lanes, do not change lanes within the intersection. When turning right, approach the intersection as close to the center line of the road as possible on unmarked and single lane. Roads, approach in the marked right turn lane on multi lane roads. While waiting to turn right across traffic, the wheels of your vehicle should be kept straight. This will help stop you being pushed into oncoming traffic if another vehicle crashes into the rear of your vehicle. Make the turn by steering to the right of an imaginary center of the intersection, or if lane lines are marked, stay within the lane. As you exit, you must keep to the left of the center of the road or within the same lane if lanes are marked. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook. Crash Patterns. Crash patterns for learner and newly licensed drivers are different from those of experienced drivers. However, most crashes fall within five main crash types. Many of these types of crashes can be prevented if the driver maintains the crash avoidance space and a safe speed. The five most common crashes are colliding with the rear of another vehicle, 45, colliding with another vehicle coming from the opposite direction, running off the road on a straight section and hitting an object or parked vehicle, colliding with the side of another vehicle, running off the road on a curve or bend and hitting an object or parked vehicle. nt.gov.au Hazardous Situations Northern Territory roads range from good quality, all-weather sealed roads to dirt tracks. Distances between towns are large and there are many driving hazards and conditions that are unique to the territory. Hazardous situations can arise at any time. Always be aware of what is in front of you, behind you, and beside you. Use your rear view and side mirrors regularly to check what other road users are doing. Always make sure that you and your passengers are wearing seat belts and that they are properly fastened. Footwear. It is recommended that you wear enclosed footwear when driving. Thongs and other footwear without an enclosed heel are not considered safe because they can interfere with the operation of the foot pedals. It is strongly recommended that enclosed footwear is worn when riding a motorcycle or moped. Driving at night. At nighttime, including dusk and dawn, many serious crashes occur because of limited visibility and fatigue. It is important to adjust your driving to nighttime conditions. Your driving speed at night should be adjusted to the range of your headlights. Drive so that you can stop well within the distance you can see. Keep your windscreen and headlights clean. Be alert for pedestrians and animals that could be hidden in roadside darkness or that could unexpectedly cross in front of your vehicle. Do not drive with the interior light on. Move the car off the road and stop if you need to read maps or do anything else with the interior light on. Stop and rest if you feel drowsy or tired. Lights. It is a legal requirement to have your headlights switched on when driving between sunset and sunrise and when weather conditions make it necessary. High beam can be used on any road, but you must dip your headlights to low beam when in approaching. Vehicle is within 200 meters or when the other vehicle's headlights dip, whichever is sooner. You should always dip your headlights when following another vehicle. Dip your lights before negotiating a crest or curve. If your headlights are in a dipped position, but you continue to receive a dip your light signal from approaching. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook Drivers, you should have your lights checked. Badly adjusted headlights can dazzle other motorists and can lead to crashes. Do not look directly at oncoming headlights. Direct your eyes to the left-hand side of the road and drive well to the left. If dazzled, you should slow down and, if you need to, stop to regain your sight. Driving in the rain. 
Rain makes it harder to see and harder to stop because the roads are more slippery than usual. Water, oil, and grime on the road also make the surface very slippery. Wet conditions offer less grip for your tires and make braking more difficult. When driving or riding in wet weather conditions, turn on your headlights. This makes you more visible to other road users. Slow down. At least double the following distance between your vehicle and the one in front. Apply your brakes gently when you need to. Jamming on the brakes could cause the vehicle to skid dangerously. In heavy rain, it could be safer to move to the side of the road. Stop. Switch on your hazard lights and wait out the downpour. Forty-seven. Animals and stock. Many roads in the NT are not fenced, so you could encounter large and small animals on the road, including birds, cattle, kangaroos, pigs, and camels. Beware of large birds and other wildlife feeding on roadkill. Slow down and sound the horn if necessary. Never swerve to avoid animals when traveling at speed. This is a common cause of single vehicle rollover crashes. Instead, maintain straight and steady steering while using emergency braking procedures to slow down. Whenever possible, avoid driving at dawn, dusk, and after dark. This is when nocturnal animals and birds are on the move. Breakdowns. Slow down when approaching a vehicle that appears to be broken down. There could be someone trying to repair it or seeking help. If your vehicle breaks down on the road. Switch on the hazard lights or use some other device, such as warning triangles, to warn other motorists of the hazard. Get any passengers out of and away from the vehicle. Push your vehicle to the side of the road if it is safe to do so. Avoid working or standing on the traffic side of your vehicle. NT.gov.au. Driver fatigue, long-range driving. Driving long distances in high temperatures can cause fatigue, one of the most common causes of serious crashes. Avoid driving for more than 10 hours a day. Use rest areas and commercial facilities located at regular intervals along major roads. Rest areas are located every 80 to 120 kilometers along major roads and are designed for road users to stop and rest when tired. Unless signposted. Rest areas are not camping areas, and road users cannot stay in a rest area for longer than 24 hours. Truck parking bays are for trucks and other heavy vehicles. Avoid using them if you are not traveling in a heavy vehicle. Motor Vehicle Registry Road Users Handbook. Four-wheel drive vehicles. Four-wheel drive vehicles are designed for both on and off-road conditions, which means they handle differently to a standard car. Four-wheel drives often have a higher center of gravity and can also be more affected by wind caused by other vehicles. When traveling on unsealed roads, it is recommended that you engage four-wheel drive. Make sure that you are familiar with how to drive the vehicle and know when and how to use the various accessories and features, such as locking front hubs and engaging four-wheel drive. If you are traveling off the major roads, seek advice about local conditions. Make sure your vehicle is suited to the terrain. Make sure you have adequate equipment, water, and other provisions, and tell someone where you are going and when you will return. Overtaking lanes. Overtaking lanes give drivers the opportunity to pass slower-moving vehicles. When driving on a road with overtaking lanes, you must always use the left lane unless you are overtaking. At the end of the overtaking lane, indicate clearly if you have to move into the other lane, giving way to any overtaking vehicle in the other lane. When changing lanes at any time, you must give other road users sufficient warning by indicating clearly and give way to any vehicles already in the other lane. Forty-nine, driving with road trains and heavy vehicles. Unlike most other states and territories in Australia, the Northern Territory relies heavily on triple road. Trains that can weigh in excess of 115 tons as a major form of transport. Road trains are used extensively between southern capital cities, Darwin, and other parts of the territory. Road trains can travel at speeds of up to 100 kilometers per hour and can be up to 53.5 meters long. As a road user in the Northern Territory, it is important that you are aware of how to safely use the roads with road trains and other heavy vehicles. Stopping safely. Do not cut in front of road trains or heavy vehicles when they are slowing down. They need more road space than a smaller vehicle to slow down and stop. Be patient and keep everyone safe. 
Do not overtake a turning vehicle. Road trains and other heavy vehicles need extra room when turning, so you need to be patient. Do not move into the blind spots to the left of the road train cabin or drive directly behind the trailer. If you cannot see the vehicle's mirrors, the driver cannot see you. nt.gov.au Roundabouts and traffic lights Stay clear when behind a road train or heavy vehicle at roundabouts and traffic lights. Road trains and heavy vehicles often make wide turns and sometimes need the entire road to maneuver. To reduce traffic disruptions, road train and heavy vehicle drivers often slow down significantly to avoid having to come to a complete stop. Road Positioning Like most heavy vehicles, a road train often uses the entire lane, so avoid traveling close to the center line. Stay to the left side in your lane to give yourself ample space, particularly if you are towing something. Park well clear of the roadway and use your parking lights during times of low visibility. Be sure to use your hazard lights if you are in a hazardous position. Lights at night. Dip your lights when traveling behind a road train or heavy vehicle, and always check your headlight alignment if your vehicle is heavily loaded or towing a caravan or trailer. Being overtaken. When being overtaken by a road train or heavy vehicle, maintain your speed and do not move off the road. Only slow down once the road train or heavy vehicle moves out to pass you. When the road train or heavy vehicle has passed, flash your headlights to let the driver know that it is safe to move back in. If traveling with others, especially if you are towing a caravan, leave enough space between vehicles so that other drivers can overtake if necessary. Overtake with care. Stay well back when behind a road train or heavy vehicle. If preparing to pass it, be certain you can see enough clear road space ahead. When overtaking, indicate, move out and pass quickly but sensibly. Do not move back to your lane until you see both of the road train or heavy vehicle's headlights in your mirrors and do not slow down. Only overtake when you are confident you can safely do so. Remember, road trains are very long and take longer to overtake. Single lane and unsealed roads. When approaching an oncoming road train or heavy vehicle on a single lane, sealed road, slow down, gradually move off the road and drive slowly on the edge of the road. On unsealed roads, slow down and safely move to the left as far as possible. Keep your distance when traveling behind road trains and heavy vehicles on unsealed roads to allow enough visibility. Where dust or rain obscures vision, turn on your lights to help let other drivers know you are there. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook Safe Following Distance Crash Avoidance The recommended rule for ensuring a safe following distance is to use the time-lapse formula to set up a crash avoidance space of approximately 3 seconds. Watch the vehicle ahead pass a fixed point on the road, such as a road marking, tree or sign, then count the seconds until the front of your car passes the same object. Reciting 1001, 1002, 1003 is a good way to estimate seconds. If you reach the object within two seconds, you are probably following too closely. This method applies at any speed. If the road is wet or slippery, you should double the crash avoidance space to at least six seconds. The driver of a long vehicle, longer than 7.5 meters, including vehicles towing caravans, must not follow behind another long vehicle at a distance closer than 200 meters. Single Vehicle Rollovers Rollover crashes are a major cause of road fatalities in the Northern Territory. These often occur when a vehicle drifts off the edge of the sealed road and the driver overcorrects. If you do drift off the edge of the road, let the vehicle gradually slow down, keeping the wheels straight and, without braking, ease the car back onto the road. 51. Skidding, turning vehicle. Skidding can be caused by one or more of the following. Excessive speed. Sudden or excessive braking. Harsh or excessive acceleration. A sudden or unplanned change of direction, such as swerving to avoid a hazard on the road. Factors that increase the risk of skidding are oil or grease on the road surface, painted line markings, loose, wet, or slippery surfaces, bald or excessively worn tires, faulty brakes, 
The risk of skidding also increases with wet surfaces and on roads with a shifting surface, such as gravel. Always reduce your speed in these situations. Bald or worn tires are also a major factor in skidding. Make sure your tires have a tread that is at least 1.5 millimeters deep and that they are correctly inflated, over or. Underinflated tires reduce grip on the road and can contribute to a skid. nt.gov.au Preventing skids can be as easy as ABC. Accelerate smoothly. Brake smoothly. Corner smoothly. Foot brake failure. If the brake pedal sinks to the floor, push the brake pedal several times to see if enough pressure can be raised to temporarily operate the brakes. If this doesn't help, ease the handbrake on with the release button held in, increasing the pressure. Gradually, sudden pressure can lock the back wheels and cause a skid. Change to a lower gear or ratio if driving an automatic. Use the horn and flash the headlights to warn other drivers. Braking with anti-lock brakes. If your vehicle has an anti-lock braking system, ABS, do not pump the brakes when stopping in an emergency. Anti-lock brakes help to prevent your vehicle from skidding. In an emergency, keep the brake pedal pressed down and steer away from danger. Tire blowout. If a front tire suddenly deflates, blows out, the vehicle will probably pull towards the side with the blown tire. If it is a rear tire, the rear of the vehicle will tend to weave. If your tire blows out, do not brake suddenly. Try not to overreact by overcorrecting with the steering. Keep a firm grip on the steering wheel. Brake gently to stop, keeping the car straight. Shattered windscreen. Most modern vehicles are fitted with laminated glass, which means the windscreen will usually only crack under impact and the driver's vision will not be seriously impaired. If the windscreen is only cracked, Leave it in place and drive at a reduced speed with all windows wound up. If all the glass shatters and you cannot see, slow down. Wind down your window so you can see and gently put your foot on the brake to warn following traffic that you are about to stop. Come to a stop slowly and carefully. Stop as close to the left side of the road as you safely can. When you have stopped, close the demister vents and cover any external air inlet vents with paper or clothing. This stops pieces of glass getting into the vents. Wrap A. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook. Thick piece of cloth around your hand or use a steering wheel lock or other heavy object to punch out the rest of the windscreen. Try to avoid leaving glass on the road surface because this could become a hazard for other motorists. Wind up all other windows to reduce discomfort and continue at a slower speed to avoid blowing out the rear window due to a buildup of pressure inside the car. Speed limits. All Northern Territory roads have a speed limit. Always be alert and drive at a speed within the limit and that suits the road, your vehicle, your driving experience, and the weather conditions. You should always drive at a speed that allows you to stop for any hazards you could encounter on the road. 53. A 110 kilometers per hour default speed limit applies on all rural roads and highways, unless otherwise signposted. A 130 kilometers per hour speed limit applies where sign posted on sections of the Stewart, Barclay, Arnhem, and Victoria highways. nt.gov.au Towing caravans and trailers. Make sure your car and caravan or trailer are well maintained and meet all legal and safety requirements. Pay particular attention to tire pressure and tread, brake system, lights, and the coupling. Make sure that your load is evenly distributed and that the caravan slash trailer and car are not overloaded. NT law says you must leave at least 200 meters between vehicles over 7.5 meters in length, which includes cars towing caravans and trailers, so that other vehicles, including road trains, are able to overtake. When towing a caravan or trailer, pull over and stop regularly to let following traffic overtake. Secure your load. Every year Australians are injured and killed in crashes caused by unrestrained loads. Our roads are also littered with plant material, plastic bags, and other rubbish for this reason. Crashes occur when heavy objects fall from vehicles onto other vehicles or pedestrians. Drivers swerve to avoid falling or fallen items from vehicles. 
Spillage on roads from lost loads causes vehicles to skid and lose control. Unrestrained loads crash into vehicle cabins during emergency braking. Vehicles overturn because of loads shifting while cornering. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook Whether you are towing a trailer or loading up UDA or truck, check your load is properly secured before you leave. Make sure your tarp is big enough to cover the load. Do not cover your lights or number plates. Limit the overhang from your load. Keep as much of your load as possible within the trailer or tray. Do not overload the vehicle. Make two trips if necessary. Tie your load down securely. Remove or secure loose items that could blow away or bounce out. More information on how to secure your load is available in the Load Restraint Guide at www.ntc.gov.au. Road Conditions Sealed roads are accessible by all vehicle types and are generally well-maintained and signposted. The edges on some sealed roads may be soft, so take care if you leave the bitumen. Reduce speed before nearing the road edge and be cautious of edge drop-offs, washaways, and loose stones. Unsealed road surfaces can vary from gravel roads to graded natural surface, dirt, roads. Take extra care when driving on unsealed roads with loose or shifting surfaces, which is more hazardous than driving on bitumen. Roads because controlling the vehicle and braking is more difficult. 55. Unsealed roads and dirt tracks can often have corrugations, a series of regular bumps or ripples with short spacings in the road surface. Always be cautious when driving on corrugations and slow down when rounding curves as speed may cause loss of traction and control of your vehicle or trailer and significantly increase your braking distance. Two-wheel drive vehicles can be driven on most gravel roads, while a four-wheel drive vehicle is recommended for dirt roads. In the wet season, some gravel roads will require a four-wheel drive vehicle, especially at creek crossings and floodways. Dust on unsealed roads could obscure your vision and conceal ruts and potholes. Slow down or pull off the road and stop until the dust settles. Leaving your headlights on will help other vehicles see you through the dust. Slow down on corrugated surfaces as they can cause the vehicle's wheels to bounce and lose traction. Watch for approaching vehicles throwing up stones that could break your windscreen. nt.gov.au Bushfires and Smoke in the dry season, between May and October, bushfires are a common occurrence in the Northern Territory. Bushfires can generate dense smoke that will reduce your visibility. When approaching a bushfire or driving through smoke, slow down and switch your headlights on. Never overtake when driving through smoke and do not stop unnecessarily as there may be another vehicle behind you. Stay to the left-hand side of the road and be alert for animals and hazards. Water on the road. Some roads in the Northern Territory are prone to flooding. If you come across a flooded road, check the depth. Do not drive through water at speed. Fast flowing water can be like hitting wet concrete. Be aware that if you cannot see the road surface, obstructions may be present or washouts may have occurred. If in doubt, do not cross. Fast flowing water can make your car float. If in doubt, do not cross. Be alert for crocodiles as they inhabit many waterways in the north. Wait until the water level drops. Never attempt to cross a flooded road where there are road-closed signs or other traffic controls in place indicating that the road is impassable. If attempting to cross and you cannot see the line markings or the road, use roadside markers and guideposts to help you stay on track. After going through water, always check the brakes are working properly. If water has reached the brakes, they might not be as effective as usual. An easy way to dry out brakes is to drive for a short distance with your foot pressing gently on the brake. Motor Vehicle Registry Road Users Handbook 57 Bogged If your vehicle becomes stuck, bogged, in mud or sand, try the following. Engage 4WD if you haven't already. Don't forget to lock your hubs if need be. Try reversing out. Let some air out of your tires and try to drive out. Remember once you're out, pump your tires back up using your air compressor. Place sticks, bushes, or other material under your tires and then try to drive out. Wait with your vehicle for another vehicle to come along and pull you out using a snatch strap or load-rated rope. Do not use the tow ball as an anchor point. 
If you are still bogged, stay with your vehicle until help arrives. nt.gov.au Basic Driving Techniques The key to good driving technique is smoothness, and the secret to smoothness is good preparation. The steering wheel should be adjusted low, facing the driver's chest rather than the face. Adjust the head restraint for your height. See Owner's Manual. Keep your arms bent. Thumbs should be on the rim of the steering wheel. Keep your knees slightly bent. Have the seat fairly upright to fully support your back and shoulders. Sit deep in the seat with your backside against the back of the seat. Brace your body using your left foot. Driving posture. When you first get in a car, take the time to adjust the seat and controls to suit your height and build. Correct driving posture reduces fatigue, improves your control of the vehicle, and allows the safety features of the vehicle to operate effectively. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook Seat Belts For seat belts to work effectively, they should be adjusted low, flat, and firm. Low, placed below your hips to fully secure your body weight. Flat, no twists, turns, or folds. Firm, when you drive, pull the belt firm regularly to remove any slack. Airbags Airbags are a supplementary restraining system. SRS, designed to be used in conjunction with seatbelts. To get the most benefit from the driver's airbag, the steering wheel should be adjusted low, facing the driver's chest rather than the face. Braking technique. Correct braking is done in two stages. First, put light pressure on the brake pedal and pause, set up the brakes, and then progressively apply the necessary braking pressure, squeeze. Two-stage braking, set up and squeeze, improves braking effectiveness, reduces the likelihood of skidding, and provides better control. Harsh or excessive braking pressure can cause skidding and a loss of control, particularly on wet or gravel roads. 59. Steering Technique There are two main steering techniques, push-slash-pull and hand-over-hand. -hand. With the push-slash-pull technique, one hand pulls the steering wheel into the other hand. The right hand stays on the right half of the steering wheel. The left hand stays on the left half. With the hand over hand technique, the hands are continually crossing over on top of the steering wheel. Regardless of which steering technique you use, some general rules apply. Steering must be smooth and progressive. Keep both hands on the outside of the steering wheel and thumbs along the rim. Use your hands to slow down and guide the wheel when it automatically returns to the center position after a turn. Reduce speed before steering and wait until the vehicle begins to straighten before accelerating. nt.gov.au Active Driver Assist Systems Anti-Lock Braking System, ABS Anti-Lock Braking Systems control braking force to prevent the tires from skidding under heavy braking or when braking in slippery conditions. Some ABS cause the brake pedal to pulse or shudder when activated, and although this may feel disconcerting, braking effort must be maintained if the situation requires a quick stop. Traction Control System, TCS Traction control systems stop the driving wheel spinning by reducing engine power or temporarily applying the brakes. This allows the vehicle to accelerate smoothly, even on slippery surfaces. Electronic Stability Control, ESC Electronic stability control becomes active when sideways slipping occurs. The ESC selectively applies the brakes to individual wheels or changing engine power and helps the driver to maintain their intended direction. Emergency Braking Assist, EBA Emergency Braking Assist Systems, also known as Electronic Brake Distribution, EBD, provide drivers with braking support during emergency situations. There are many different brake assist systems. Some systems warn drivers of impending collisions, while more advanced systems automatically apply the brakes at maximum efficiency when required. Motor Vehicle Registry Road Users Handbook 61 Eco Driving Eco Driving Tips Only fill your petrol tank to the first click. This will allow for expansion of the fuel and reduce emissions. Use air conditioning only when necessary. Air conditioning is most efficient when you are traveling above 60 km per hour. Check the tire pressure frequently. Underinflated tires increase rolling resistance and fuel consumption. 
Turn the engine off when you are stopped for lengthy periods. Avoid carrying unnecessary weight in the vehicle. Remove objects such as roof racks and bike racks when not in use and do not leave heavy items, like golf clubs, permanently in your vehicle. Do not speed. Stick to the speed limit because higher speeds increase fuel consumption. Do not warm up the engine before starting off. Modern vehicles do not need warming up, except in cold climates and after long periods of non-use. Gentle driving is enough to warm up the engine. Maintain your vehicle. Make sure your vehicle is regularly serviced and has the correct amount of engine oil and coolant. Do not over-rev your engine. When driving a manual vehicle, change gears at a lower engine speed, revs, to avoid laboring the engine. When driving an automatic car, use the correct pressure on accelerator to avoid over-revving on takeoff. Maintain a steady speed. Smooth acceleration and deceleration will decrease fuel consumption. General Road Rules Safely sharing our roads and highways Road trains are big, heavy, and can be over 50 meters long. They will always take longer to stop, so don't cut in front of them when they are braking. Be patient and don't compromise on safety. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook Speed Limits Speed limit signs tell you the maximum speed you are allowed to drive in good conditions. Where there is no posted speed limit sign, default speed limits apply. Default speed limits. In the NT, there are different default speed limits depending on where you are driving. In built-up areas, a default speed limit of 60 km per hour applies unless the town has gazetted a lower default speed limit. Many towns and communities across the NT have chosen to gazette a default speed limit of 50 km per hour or less. Where a 50 km per hour or other speed limit, default speed limit applies to a built-up area, a sign is placed on each road approaching that locality. The default speed limit outside built-up areas is 110 km per hour. However, other speed limits apply in some areas. 63. Maximum Speed Limit you must not drive at a speed that exceeds the maximum speed shown on a speed limit sign for the section of road on which you are traveling. If in doubt, slow down. No matter what the sign posted speed limit, you must not drive at a speed that is careless, reckless, or that could endanger other people. Drive at a speed to suit. The traffic conditions. The type and condition of the road. The weather conditions. The capabilities of your vehicle. Your own driving ability. The maximum speed limit of 130 km per hour applies on some sections of the Barclay, Stewart, Victoria, and Arnhem highways as indicated. Drivers with speed restrictions. Learner license holders are restricted to a maximum speed of 80 km per hour. Provisional license holders are restricted to a maximum speed of 100 km per hour. nt.gov.au Drivers of heavy vehicles, such as buses of more than 5 tons GVM or other heavy vehicles of more than 12 tons GVM, must not exceed 100 km per hour. Vehicles traveling under permit conditions can also have a maximum speed limit imposed. Speed Limit Signs There are two types of speed limit signs, regulatory and advisory speed signs. Regulatory speed limit signs have a white background with the speed limit shown inside a red circle. This is the maximum speed that you are allowed to do on the section of road. It is illegal to drive faster than the posted speed limit. Advisory speed signs have a yellow background. These signs show the recommended maximum speed in good driving conditions for the average car. Advisory speed signs are often placed before curves, bends, and crests. Areas without speed signs. Some roads do not have speed signs, such as unsealed roads and roads in remote areas. In these areas, you should drive to the conditions, but not exceed the default speed limit that would apply for the area or type of road. End speed limit sign 60. Local traffic areas. A local traffic area is an area of local streets that has a speed limit of 40 km per hour. The lower speed limit provides greater safety for all road users and lower noise levels for people living in the area. Look out for cyclists, pedestrians, and children. Local Traffic Zone Sign 40 Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook Shared Traffic Zone 
A shared traffic zone is usually a street where pedestrians, cyclists, and other vehicles can share the road safely. These zones often have a speed limit of 10 kilometers per hour. Be sure to keep to the speed limit for the safety of all road users. When driving in a shared traffic zone, you must give way to all pedestrians. 65. School Zone A school zone is the area around a school with a maximum speed limit of 40 km per hour. Between the school zone and end school zone signs, you must obey the school zone speed limit. The school zone limit only applies on gazetted school days and during the times shown on the sign. Shared Zone Sign 10 Work Site Where a road work speed limit sign is displayed, the speed limit is enforceable and must be obeyed. When approaching roadworks, pay attention to all signs and obey reduced speed signs. 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Days. School zone sign 40 and school zone sign 60. Roadwork sign 40. nt.gov.au. School buses. Be particularly careful when passing stationary buses from 7 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. and 2.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. This is when children are traveling to and from school, and there is likely to be children around the bus. School bus lights. Buses use signs and flashing orange lights to warn you that they are picking up or setting down school children. The lights begin to flash when the bus stops and the doors are opened. They keep flashing for about 30 seconds after the doors close and continue even after the bus moves off. It is recommended that you do not drive faster than 40 km per hour when flashing lights are displaying because there could be children crossing or about to cross the road. If the bus displays a speed limit sign between the flashing lights, you must not drive past the bus in the same direction at more than the speed shown on the sign while the lights are flashing. Once you have passed the bus, the usual speed limit for that section of road applies. Speed cameras. Fixed speed cameras are an effective and efficient means of enforcement and a deterrent to speeding on specific high-risk lengths of road. Safety cameras. Safety cameras use digital technology and are often capable of detecting both speeding and red light offenses. Speed and red light cameras are active across the Northern Territory. These cameras are in addition to mobile speed camera vans that operate across the Northern Territory. Alcohol limits. The laws in the NT limit the amount of alcohol you can consume if you are driving a vehicle. Legal limits. Your blood slash breath alcohol concentration, BAC slash BRAC, must be under the limit shown in the table on the following page. Heavy penalties apply for driving with a BAC slash BRAC on or over the limit. For more information, Please see Alcohol, Drugs, Medications, and Driving in Section 3 of this handbook. BAC slash BRAC limits. People with a zero BAC slash BRAC requirement must not have any alcohol in their blood at the time they try to start the engine, set the vehicle in motion, or drive the vehicle. As a learner and provisional driver, you must not drive after you have consumed any alcoholic drinks or food containing alcohol. The following table shows the BAC slash BRAC limits for all license classes. You must stay below the limit for your class of license. Motor Vehicle Registry Road Users Handbook 67 Drugs, Legal and Illegal It is illegal to drive, attempt to drive, or instruct a learner while affected by drugs. Drug Testing Police can arrest you if they suspect you are driving while impaired by drugs. You will be subject to a roadside drug saliva test, and you can be taken to a hospital to give samples of blood and urine for drug testing. The sample will be analyzed for any substance, including some prescription drugs known to impair driving. In the event of a crash where someone is admitted to hospital, blood samples are taken, which can be tested for drugs. Medicines and over-the-counter drugs Many prescription and some over-the-counter medicines can affect your ability to drive and could make you unfit to drive. As a driver, they can affect your concentration, mood, coordination, and reactions. Do not drive while taking medicines with a warning label that tells you not to drive, and do not drive if any medication has an effect on your ability to control a vehicle. nt.gov.au Some medicines that can affect driving include painkillers, medicines for blood pressure, nausea, allergies, inflammations, and fungal infections. 
tranquilizers, sedatives, and sleeping pills. Diet pills. Cold and flu medicines. Seatbelts and child restraints. Everyone in a vehicle, the driver, and all passengers must wear a correctly fitted and adjusted seatbelt. A passenger must move to a seat with a seatbelt rather than sit in one without a seatbelt. Child restraints. All children under seven years of age must be secured in an approved child restraint or booster seat when traveling in a vehicle. The type of the restraint depends on the age of the child. Babies under six months of age must be restrained in a rear-facing restraint, baby capsule. Children between six months and under four years of age must be restrained in a rear-facing or forward-facing restraint. Children from four years to under seven years of age must be restrained in a forward-facing restraint or booster seat. Children seven years of age and over must be restrained in an adult seatbelt or a booster seat. There are also laws about where children can sit in the vehicle. Children under four years of age must not be in the front row of a vehicle with two or more rows of seats. Children from four to under seven years of age can only sit in the front row of a vehicle with two or more rows when all other seats are occupied by children of a lesser age in an approved child restraint. The ages specified above are a guide for the safety of your child. If your child is too small for a restraint specified for their age, they should be kept in their current restraint for as long as necessary. If your child is too large for a restraint specified for their age, they should move to the next level of restraint. Approved child restraints must be properly fastened, adjusted, and anchored. All child restraints should be fitted in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions. Look in your car manual for the location of anchorage points for child restraints. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook what type of child restraint to use? Child restraints are available in a range of styles to suit children of different sizes. Restraints are available for children up to 32 kilograms and or 10 years old. All child restraints should be fitted according to the manufacturer's instructions. When buying a child restraint, look for the sticker certifying the child restraint meets Australian standard AS 1754. 69. Seatbelts and child restraints in commercial passenger vehicles, taxis, minibuses. Drivers of commercial passenger vehicles can be fined and given demerit points for every unrestrained. Passenger they carry under 16 years of age. Unrestrained passengers aged 16 years and over traveling in a taxi will also receive a fine. Taxi drivers and drivers carrying passengers for hire or reward, commercial vehicle operators, do not have to provide child restraints. However, they must ensure that passengers occupy individual seating positions and are appropriately restrained. An approved child restraint is used if available. Passengers do not occupy the same seating position as another passenger. No passenger under four years of age sits in the front seat. A child between four years and seven years of age should only sit in the front row if all the other seats in the row or rows behind the front row are occupied by passengers who are also under seven years old. All taxis and commercial passenger vehicles should have an anchorage point that can be used to fit a child restraint. However, not all taxis will have a child restraint, so you may need to provide your own. nt.gov.au Exemptions a driver reversing a vehicle does not have to wear a seatbelt. A seatbelt must be used as soon as the vehicle is put in forward gear. Children under one year of age, traveling in commercial passenger vehicles can be nursed on the lap of a passenger over 16 years of age if there is no child restraint available. If a person is over one year of age, they must be in a seatbelt or a child restraint. Police, Fire, and Emergency Services when you hear a siren or see the flashing blue or red lights of an emergency vehicle, such as a police, fire, or ambulance vehicle, you must give way. This means get out of the way so the emergency vehicle has a clear passage through traffic. Generally, if you hear a siren or see the flashing lights, pull over to the left until the emergency vehicle passes. If you are pursued by a police vehicle, you must immediately pull over and stop in the nearest safe location. Police directions. Prepare to be stopped if you see. The police. A police vehicle. Red slash blue flashing lights. 
The police using signs. Police often give hand signal directions at intersections and attend many incidents on the road. You must always obey any direction you are given from a police officer. Funeral processions or authorized processions. When driving, you must not negligently or willfully interfere with or interrupt the free passage along the road of any funeral cortege or authorized procession. You must not interfere with any vehicle or person apparently forming part of the funeral or procession. Intersections, give way, and turning. It is very important that you approach an intersection at a speed that lets you give way to any vehicles in or approaching the intersection. Do not get caught in the middle of the intersection when the lights change. You must stay on the approach side of the intersection until you see a space in your lane on the other side of the intersection that is big enough for your vehicle. Keep intersections clear at all times. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook Priority for Buses In speed zones of 70 km per hour and under, a bus that displays a giveaway sign and signals that it is going to pull out from its stopping place has priority over other traffic traveling in the left lane or left line of traffic. Giving way to a bus. When driving or riding on a length of road in the left lane or the left line of traffic, you must give way to a bus. In speed zones of 70 km per hour or below. When driving or riding, if the bus displays a give way to buses sign. If the indicator lights of the bus are operating. If the bus is about to enter or proceed in the lane or line of traffic. The driver of the bus is allowed to enter the lane or line of traffic only if it is safe to do so. 71. Give way rules where there are no signs. Give way to the right rule. The give way to the right rule applies when you are approaching an uncontrolled intersection and there is traffic approaching the intersection from your right. Some crossroads have no traffic lights or signs. Generally, if you are turning across another vehicle's path, you must give way. The give way to the right rule. When turning at an intersection, you, car, a diagrams on next page, must give way to. Oncoming vehicles going straight ahead, diagram one. Oncoming vehicles turning left, diagram two. Any vehicle approaching on your right, diagram three. If you and an oncoming vehicle are turning right at an intersection, both cars should pass in front of each other, diagram four. If other drivers do not give way to you, do not force them or yourself into a dangerous situation. You must also give way to any pedestrians at or near the intersection on the road you are entering. nt.gov.au Diagram 1. Car A must give way to Car B. Diagram 3. Car A must give way to Car B. Diagram 2. Car A must give way to Car B. Diagram 4. Turning vehicles pass in front of each other. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook. Stop signs and stop lines. Stop signs and stop lines, continuous line that crosses the road at the stop sign, are used at intersections to control traffic. When you come to a stop sign, you must stop completely before reaching the line and as close as possible to the stop, continuous, line. Where there is no stop line, stop before reaching and as close as possible to the intersection. 73. A stop sign or a stop line means you must give way to all vehicles traveling in, entering, or approaching the intersection, whether vehicles are turning left or right, or going straight ahead. You must give way to any pedestrians crossing the road into which you are turning. Giving way at a stop sign means the driver must remain stopped until it is safe to proceed. Stop sign. Car A must give way to car B. nt.gov.au Giveaway signs and giveaway lines. Giveaway signs and giveaway lines, broken line, are used at intersections to control traffic. When you come to a giveaway sign, you must slow down and prepare to stop if necessary. A giveaway sign or line means you. Giveaway sign. T intersections. At T intersections, the vehicle traveling on the road that ends the terminating road, must give way to any pedestrians crossing or vehicles traveling on the road that continues unless otherwise signposted. T intersection sign. Must give way to all vehicles traveling in, entering or approaching the intersection, whether they are turning left or right or going straight ahead. You must give way to any pedestrians crossing the road into which you are turning. 
Giving way at a giveaway sign means the driver must slow down and, if necessary, stop to avoid a collision. Where a stop or giveaway sign has been removed, the line marked across the road has the same meaning as the sign. Car A must give way to car B. This diagram, below, shows a T-intersection where the continuing road, which is marked with broken white lines, goes around a corner. Car B must signal to leave the continuing road and enter the terminating road. Car B must give way to car A. Car B must give way to car A. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook Signaling, Indicating Signaling is communicating with other road users using your vehicle's indicators or blinkers. You should signal early enough to allow other road users to see your signal and act on it if required. You must signal to let others know what you plan to do. Give plenty of warning by signaling before you turn left or right or change lanes. 75. Giving a signal does not mean that other road users must give way to you or that you can change direction without taking care and giving way. Make sure your indicator is turned off after each turn or lane change. If your indicators are not working, not clearly visible, or your vehicle does not have indicator lights, you must give a hand signal when turning right or stopping. You are turning right. You are stopping or slowing down. nt.gov.au Turning. Plan your turns early so that you are in the correct part of the road and have enough time to signal where you want to turn. Left turns. You are stopping or slowing down. You must make a left turn from the left side of the road. When turning left. Signal left. Move close to the left side of the road. Keep to the left side of the road you are entering. Use a slip lane where one is provided. When driving on a multi-lane road, you must turn left from the left lane or from a lane with a pavement arrow pointing left. Right turns. When turning right. Signal right. Move as close to the center line as possible. When turning on a multi-lane road, turn right from the right lane or a lane with an arrow pointing right. Turn right only when it is safe. In marked lanes, you must stay in the same lane as you go from one road to another. You must give way to pedestrians crossing the road into which you are turning. Motor Vehicle Registry Road Users Handbook 77 Left car can turn left into left lane or continue straight ahead. Middle car can continue straight ahead or turn right into middle lane. Right car can only turn into right lane. nt.gov.au Plan ahead. Stop lines. You need to think ahead to stay in the same lane as you drive from one road to another. The diagram below shows a situation that calls for planning ahead. Car A needs to turn left into the road marked X. It is best to make the first right turn from the left lane to make it easy for the next turn left into road X. Car A and car B turning right with car A turning left after the first right turn. Follow the instruction of any road markings that show how the turn must be made. If there are no road markings, you must make a right turn by passing as near as possible to the right of the center of the intersection. Motor Vehicle Registry Road Users Handbook 79 Median Strips when making a right turn through a divided road with a median strip, you must wait for a suitable gap in the oncoming traffic, drive as far as you can into the central dividing part of the road, and stop until it is safe to continue. Make sure you obey all give way or stop signs or traffic lights. In this diagram, the green car gives way as the blue cars on the main road have right of way. The blue cars must still give way to any vehicles approaching from their left along the main road before completing their U-turn or right-hand turn. nt.gov.au Traffic lights. When turning right at traffic lights, enter the intersection as shown in the diagram below unless a sign indicates otherwise or there is a red right turn arrow displayed at the traffic lights. Wait until oncoming traffic clears or breaks and then turn safely. If the lights change to yellow or red while you are in the middle of the intersection, you're allowed to continue to turn right. You must turn as soon as it is safe to do so. While you are waiting to turn, be sure your front wheels and car are straight and not blocking the oncoming traffic. Blue car enters the intersection to turn right. Motor Vehicle Registry Road Users Handbook 81 One-Way Streets 
When turning right into a one-way street, you must turn as close as possible to the right side of the road you are entering. When turning right from a one-way street, you must turn from as close as possible to the right side of the road. Turning from a one-way street. U-turns. Take extra care when making U-turns because they can be dangerous. U-turns cannot be made. Where there is a no U-turn sign, across any single unbroken, continuous, line or double center lines, whether or not one line is broken. At traffic lights, unless you see a U-turn permitted sign at the intersection, you must start your U-turn from the lane nearest to the center of the road or, if there are no lane markings, the left of the center of the road. Before starting the U-turn, you must make sure it is safe, check mirrors and blind spots, and that you have a clear view of any approaching traffic. You must not start your U-turn unless you can make the turn without obstructing traffic. Give way to all vehicles and pedestrians and signal before you start to turn. nt.gov.au Three-point turn. Three-point turns are used when a road is not wide enough to do a U-turn. Because it takes longer to do a three-point turn in heavy traffic or on busy roads, it is often safer to turn around by driving around the block instead. Before starting a three-point or U-turn, signal, check mirrors and blind spots. After completing the turn, signal and check mirrors and blind spots before rejoining the traffic. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook Roundabouts Many intersections have a central roundabout. Roundabouts manage the traffic flow in roads with either a single lane or multiple lanes. Signs Identifying Roundabouts these are the signs that are associated with roundabouts. There is a roundabout ahead give way to vehicles on. The roundabout. 83. Making turns and giving way at roundabouts. Please refer to the roundabout diagram on the following page. Approaching a roundabout. Vehicles entering a roundabout must give way to any vehicle already in the roundabout. Giving way at a roundabout means the driver must slow down and, if necessary, stop to avoid a collision. Turning left, you must approach the roundabout in the left lane, signal left, stay in the left lane, and exit into the left lane. Going straight ahead, do not signal when approaching the roundabout. You can approach the roundabout from either left or right lanes, unless there are road markings with other instructions. Drive in the same lane through the roundabout and exit in the same lane. Turning right, you must approach in the right lane, signal right, stay in the right lane, and exit into the right lane. Making a U-turn. When you use the roundabout to make a U-turn, you must approach in the right lane, signal right, stay in the right lane, and exit into the right lane. Exiting a roundabout. Where practical, you must signal left when leaving the roundabout. The use of the left indicator to leave a roundabout should occur just before exiting the roundabout. nt.gov.au Roundabouts and cyclists. Cyclists are allowed to turn right from the left-hand lane. When passing each exit, the rider must give way to any vehicle leaving the roundabout from that exit. The rules for slowing down, giving way, and signaling when approaching and exiting at roundabouts are the same for single-lane and multi-lane roundabouts. Cars entering and exiting a four-lane roundabout. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook. Traffic Lights. You can proceed through the intersection or turn if it is safe to do so unless a sign or signal such as a no right turn sign or a no entry sign prohibits that movement. The intersection or the road beyond the intersection is blocked. If turning right, enter past the stop line and proceed as far as possible without impacting on oncoming vehicles. Wait within the intersection until it is safe to complete the turn. You must give way to other vehicles and pedestrians in the intersection, including turning traffic. Pedestrians if you are turning to the right or left. Vehicles from the opposite direction if you are turning right. Flashing yellow circle or arrow. You can proceed with caution, obeying the give way to the right rule or the T-intersection rule, whichever is appropriate. 85. Red means stop. Wait behind the stop line. Do not go through the intersection. Yellow, amber, means stop. You can only enter the intersection if you are so close that sudden braking might cause a crash. Green means proceed through the intersection carefully. 
n2.gov.au. Turning traffic lights. Some traffic lights have arrows to control traffic turning right or left. If you're in a turning lane, the arrows will tell you when you can go or stop in the same way as a standard traffic light does. These signals at traffic lights. Some traffic lights have AB signal to control traffic around buses at intersections. Traffic lights with AB signal attached follow the same concept as turning traffic lights. The B signal only applies to buses. All other traffic must follow the main traffic lights. If no B signals are illuminated, buses must obey the main lights. Green arrow means you can only turn in that direction. You must not go straight ahead. Red arrow means you must wait behind the stop line until the arrow turns green, even if there is no traffic on the road. If the B signal at the traffic light is white and the main traffic light is red, all other vehicles must stay while the buses may go. Buses may proceed in any direction unless signs or markings indicate otherwise. When the lights turn green, other vehicles may proceed through the intersection. Yellow, amber, means stop. You can enter the intersection only if you are so close that sudden braking might cause a crash. Red B means buses stay. Green means other vehicles go. White B means buses only go. Motor Vehicle Registry Road Users Handbook. Signs at traffic lights no right or left turn. Standard or illuminated signs show when either a right or left turn is prohibited. There are some areas that have allowances for certain times of the day when you can and cannot turn, where a time period, e.g. 7 a.m. to 10 a.m., is displayed on or near the sign. It shows when the sign applies. If there is no time period, the sign applies at all times. 87. U-turns. You must not make a U-turn at an intersection with traffic lights unless there is a U-turn permitted sign. No U-turn illuminated no U-turn. Illuminated signs are regulatory signs that apply. When the sign is illuminated and are used during peak traffic periods, no left turn, no right turn. Permitted. Illuminated no left turn, illuminated no right turn. Illuminated signs are regulatory signs that apply when the sign is illuminated and are used during peak traffic periods. U-turn allowed. When making a U-turn, you must give way to all other traffic and pedestrians and not unreasonably obstruct traffic approaching from the front or behind. n2.gov.au Left turn permitted on red light. You can turn left on a red light after stopping where a left turn on red permitted after stopping sign is. Displayed. When turning left, you must give way to all traffic approaching from the right. Left turn on red light is only allowed at intersections where the sign has been placed. Early warning signals. Wigwags. A wigwag is an early warning sign with flashing lights to prepare drivers to stop when approaching an intersection. Wigwag signs are located before an intersection on either side of the road to warn drivers that the traffic lights ahead will change from green to yellow or red. It is important to slow down whenever you see the wigwags flashing, even if the traffic lights ahead are green. Wigwag. Red light cameras. Red light cameras are used to photograph vehicles that go through a red light. A penalty notice, fine and demerit points, is then sent to the owner of the vehicle, who has the option to pay the fine. Advise NT police in the form of a statutory declaration of the name and address of the person driving the vehicle at the time of the offense. Advise NT police that they want to have the case heard by a court. If you are crossing the intersection as the light changes to yellow and it is not safe to stop, do not panic. Continue driving through the intersection. The camera only takes a photograph if you cross the stop line after the light has turned red. Traffic already in the intersection or entering on a yellow light will not activate the red light camera. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook Cyclist and Pedestrian Signals When making a turn at an intersection, you must give way to cyclists and pedestrians on the road into which you are turning. Where the traffic at the intersection is controlled by traffic lights, there could be signals for cyclists and pedestrians. 89. Cyclists can cross at an intersection where the traffic lights are red if there is a green bicycle light. 
that show them when to cross. A pedestrian must press the button to activate the lights and must cross only when the green pedestrian light shows. Pedestrians must not cross when the red pedestrian light shows and must not start to cross when the red pedestrian light starts flashing. Pedestrians must not start to cross. Pedestrians must not start to cross but can finish crossing. Pedestrians can start to cross. Pedestrians. Press button. Wait. For walk signal. Walk. Walk. Pedestrians. Press button. Wait S. For walk signal. Pedestrian crossing at traffic lights. nt.gov.au. Road markings. Painted arrows. Arrows are painted on the road to tell you which direction must be taken by traffic in each lane. When more than one direction is shown, you can go in the direction of either arrow. You must signal that you are going to turn even if the lane you are in is only allowed to turn in one direction. When you turn, stay in the same lane as you move from one road to the other. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook Dividing Lines Unless a sign tells you otherwise, you can cross any type of dividing line when turning right at an intersection. You can also turn to the right across a dividing line to park an angle parking on the opposite side of the road or to enter or leave a property, e.g. home or shops, by the shortest route. 91. When overtaking a cyclist, you must leave a minimum distance of 1 meter when passing a cyclist in a 60 kilometers per hour or less speed zone or 1.5 meters when the speed limit is over 60 kilometers per hour. Broken white dividing lines can be crossed to overtake if the road ahead is clear. Double white lines with a broken line closer to you, you can cross the lines to overtake if the road ahead is clear. Remember, you must leave a minimum distance of 1 meter when passing a cyclist in a 60 km per hour or less speed zone, or 1.5 meters when the speed limit is over 60 km per hour. nt.gov.au Double white lines with an unbroken, continuous, line closer to you, you cannot overtake across these lines. Single white unbroken, continuous, line, you cannot overtake across this line. Double white unbroken, continuous, lines, you cannot overtake across these lines. Motor Vehicle Registry Road Users Handbook 93 Painted Islands you must not drive on a section of painted road that is surrounded by double lines. You can drive on a painted island that is surrounded by single continuous or broken lines for up to 50 meters to enter or leave the road, or to enter a turning lane that begins immediately after the painted island. You must not drive on areas surrounded by double lines. When you enter a turning lane from a painted island, you must give way to any vehicle already in the turning lane or entering the turning lane from another marked lane. You must not stop on a painted island. In some instances, such as giving way to emergency vehicles or when avoiding an obstruction, you can drive on a painted island regardless of the type of lines around the island. nt.gov.au Car B must give way to car A, giving way to a vehicle already in the turning lane or entering from another marked lane. Keep clear pavement marking. Keep clear pavement markings are used in certain places, such as outside ambulance and fire station exits, to make sure vehicles are not obstructed when leaving on an emergency call. You must not stop between the lines marked across the road. Keep clear pavement markings are also used at some. T intersections to prevent queuing across the intersection. Motor Vehicle Registry Road Users Handbook. Edge Lines. Traffic Lights. Edge lines can be broken or unbroken, continuous, and are marked to keep traffic away from soft road edges and breakdown lanes. They also help you see where you are going. 95. You can drive on, across, or outside edge lines for up to 100 meters only if you are. Stopping. Overtaking on the inside of vehicles turning right or, in a one-way street, overtaking vehicles turning left. Turning off or onto the road by the shortest route. Turning left or right at intersections. Driving a slow-moving vehicle. Shortest route. nt.gov.au Audible lines. 
Audible lines are lines composed of a series of raised pieces of material that create a noise or vibration if driven on by a motor vehicle. These lines are used to warn drivers who veer over the line that they have traveled outside their lane. Curb lines. Yellow lines painted near the edge of the road show that there are stopping restrictions and tell you what rules apply to that particular section of road. Broken yellow curb line. A broken yellow curb line is a clearway line. You must not stop at the edge of the road between the hours shown on the clearway sign except in a medical or similar emergency. Buses, taxis, and hire cars can only stop on broken yellow curb lines to pick up or set down passengers. Unbroken, continuous, yellow curb line. An unbroken yellow curb line is a no-stopping line. You must not stop for any reason except a medical or similar emergency. Cyclist and pedestrian crossings and refuges. You must share the road with cyclists and pedestrians. Special markings on the road show where cyclists and pedestrians have special rights. You must give way to cyclists and pedestrians crossing the road into which you are turning. You must give way to cyclists and pedestrians, even if there is no marked pedestrian crossing or intersection, if there is any danger of colliding with them. Pedestrian crossings. Pedestrian crossings allow people to cross the road safely. These crossings are usually marked by white stripes on the road and are also known as zebra crossings. Some pedestrian crossings have zigzag lines marked on the road before the crossing. Take extra care when you see a zigzag line on the road because this means you are approaching a crossing you may not be able to see because of a curve, crest, or dip in the road. You must not stop or park on or within 20 meters before or 10 meters after a pedestrian crossing. Do not overtake any vehicle that is stopping or has stopped at a crossing. Pedestrian refuges. A pedestrian refuge is an island in the middle of the road. The island allows pedestrians to cross the road in two stages. When you are approaching a pedestrian refuge, you should always look out for pedestrians. Motor Vehicle Registry Road Users Handbook 97. Do not overtake any vehicle that is stopping or has stopped at a crossing. Pelican Crossings A pelican crossing is a special kind of pedestrian crossing controlled by traffic lights. The traffic lights for drivers have a different color sequence to other situations. After the red light, the traffic lights for drivers start to flash yellow. At the same time, the pedestrians see a flashing red don't walk sign. When the flashing yellow signal starts, you can drive carefully through the crossing if there is no risk of hitting a pedestrian. Children's Crossings These crossings operate before, during, and after school hours on school days. They are highlighted by red flags with the words Children Crossing on them. When the flags are displayed, you must slow down and stop before the stop line if a pedestrian is on or entering the crossing. You must not proceed until all pedestrians have left the crossing. You must not stop on or within 20 meters before or 10 meters after a children's crossing nt.gov.au Combined Children's and Pedestrian Crossing Some pedestrian crossings are used as children's crossings at some times during the day. When children crossing flags are displayed, this means that the children's crossing is operating and the rules for a children's crossing apply. When the flags are not displayed, the crossing operates as a normal pedestrian crossing. School Crossing Supervisors as you approach a pedestrian crossing or children's crossing where a school crossing supervisor is displaying a stop, children crossing sign, you must slow down and stop. You can proceed when the school crossing supervisor no longer displays the sign in your direction or has indicated it is safe for you to proceed. Traffic signs. Traffic signs warn you of possible dangers and provide information. They tell you what the rules are and what the road conditions are like. Regulatory signs. Regulatory signs inform road users of traffic laws or regulations. It is illegal not to obey a regulatory sign. Regulatory signs are normally placed at the point or beginning of the section where the regulation applies. Some of the most common regulatory signs are shown in this handbook. Except for stop, give way, and roundabout signs, most regulatory signs are rectangles. Regulatory signs are usually black on a white background, but they are sometimes other colors, like red. Some parking signs are green on white. 
Motor Vehicle Registry Road Users Handbook 99. Wrong Way. Go Back. Wrong Way Sign. Turn Around and Go Back. Keep Left Sign. Keep to the Left of the Sign. Keep Right Sign. Keep to the Right of the Sign. One Way Sign. Only Travel in the Direction Shown by the Arrow. Two Way Sign. This road now has two lanes of traffic. Traveling in opposite directions. Right lane must turn right sign. All traffic in the right lane must turn right. Left lane must turn left sign. All traffic in the left lane must turn left. No entry sign. Do not drive beyond the sign. nt.gov.au Warning signs. Warning signs or advisory signs are used to warn traffic of potentially hazardous conditions on or near the road. Warning signs let road users know about conditions that might warrant extra care and that could call for a reduction in speed to help keep the driver and other road users safe. Warning signs are usually black on a yellow background and are mostly diamond-shaped. Pictures, diagrams, and symbols are used to alert you to danger. Some of the more common signs are shown here. Yellow diamond cross sign, crossroads ahead. Yellow diamond T sign, the road you. Are traveling on ends, you must give way to all traffic. Yellow diamond lane change sign, road conditions will change ahead to two lanes of oncoming traffic. Yellow diamond side on T sign, a side road meets the road you are traveling on. Yellow diamond arrow sign, the road ahead curves to the right. Yellow diamond arrow sign. There is a sharp right turn in the road ahead. Yellow diamond hook arrow sign. Sharp bend to the left ahead. Yellow diamond bendy arrow sign. Winding road ahead. Yellow diamond Y sign. Road divides ahead. Yellow diamond merging sign. Divided road ends ahead. Motor vehicle registry road user's handbook. 101. Yellow diamond bottleneck sign, road narrows ahead. Yellow diamond with red triangle sign, give way sign ahead. Yellow diamond with red hexagon sign, stop sign ahead. Yellow diamond with arrow and walking leg sign, pedestrian crossing ahead. Yellow diamond with walking people sign, pedestrians might be crossing ahead. Yellow diamond with walking children sign, children might be crossing ahead. Yellow diamond with the word hospital sign, hospital ahead, drive carefully. Yellow diamond with a bicycle sign, look out for cyclists. Yellow diamond with a swerving car sign, road is slippery when wet. Yellow diamond with car on a hill sign, steep descent ahead. nt.gov.au Yellow diamond with a truck sign, beware of slow moving vehicles entering traffic. Yellow rectangle with the words, traffic hazard ahead sign. This sign is used where there is a temporary emergency situation, such as an oil spill, fallen tree, or landslip on the road ahead. Yellow diamond with two parallel indented. Line sign, narrow bridge ahead, slow down and be prepared to give way or stop. Yellow diamond with narrow bridge sign, narrow bridge. Yellow diamond with the word dip sign. The road ahead dips. A dip is a sudden slope down then up. Yellow diamond with a bump sign. There is a hump in the road ahead. A hump is a sudden slope up and then down. Yellow diamond with a kangaroo sign. Look out for kangaroos. Yellow diamond with the word crest sign. As you approach the hill, you might not be able to see a safe distance in front of you, so drive carefully. Yellow diamond with the word grid sign. A grid is ahead. A grid is a row of metal lengths across the road used instead of a gate to contain livestock. Yellow diamond with the word causeway sign. A causeway is a raised road that has been built across a low or a wet place or a body of water. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook 103 Yellow diamond with a pole, cross, and circle symbols, railway crossing. Flashing signal ahead. 
Yellow diamond with a train sign. Look out for trains. Advisory signs. Advisory speed signs are sometimes used in combination with other signs at certain places. For example, a yellow diamond sign with arrow and speed limit sign underneath shows the maximum speed that is safe in good conditions road bends to right. 55 kilometers per hour maximum speed is recommended in good conditions. Sometimes other signs are used with warning signs to advise on how long you should look out for a particular hazard. These signs are placed where a driver is likely to come across that hazard on the road or surrounding areas. They also give an indication of the distance that the hazard is likely. For example, a kangaroo's next 40 kilometers sign indicates that there is an increased chance of kangaroos being on or near the road for approximately the next 40 kilometers. nt.gov.au Warning triangles and safety vests for crashes and breakdowns. A warning triangle gives approaching traffic an advance notice to a breakdown or a crash ahead. You may see a triangle placed on a curve or bend in the road before you see the actual incident, so proceed with caution when you first see the warning triangle. Place the warning triangle 50 to 150 meters behind your vehicle either to the side of the road or on the edge of a traffic lane. When walking to place the triangle, hold it in front of you to alert drivers to the hazard. Hold it behind you when you collect it and return to your vehicle. For vehicles with a GVM over 12 tons in a speed zone of less than 80 kilometers per hour, a warning triangle must be displayed in the following locations. 50 to 150 meters behind the vehicle or fallen load. 50 to 150 meters in front of the vehicle or fallen load. To the side of the vehicle. It is suggested that you carry in your vehicle at least one high-visibility safety vest and wear it by the roadside when attending a breakdown or a crash scene to aid in your personal safety. Stock signs. When you see any of the following signs, you could be approaching animals on or near the road. You must slow down or stop to avoid hitting them. In speed zones 80 kilometers per hour and higher, the warning triangles must be displayed in the following locations. 200 to 250 meters behind the vehicle or fallen load. 200 to 250 meters in front of the vehicle or fallen load. To the side of the vehicle. Yellow diamond sign with image of cattle. Stock could be crossing ahead. Yellow diamond sign with the words stock crossing. Stock could be crossing ahead. Motor vehicle registry road user's handbook. Injured animals. If you hit a domestic animal, contact the owner, police, or the RSPCA. If possible, injured domestic animals should be taken to the nearest vet or animal shelter. If you injure or kill a native or wild animal, try to remove it from the road, but take care because some animals carry young in their pouches. For help and advice on what to do, Follow the basic information below and contact a vet or wild care NT or the local wildlife rescue service. As a general guide, make sure it is safe to stop and get out of your vehicle. You might need to walk back to the animal. Approach any injured animal with extreme care. They could be frightened and lash out or bite. Minimize noise, handling, and stress. Keep pets and children away from wildlife. Do not offer food to wildlife especially not cow's milk. Move road kill at least 10 meters off the road. Check dead kangaroo and possum pouches for joeys. Contact your local wildlife rescue organization. Remember, your safety always comes first. There are volunteer organizations that care for injured or orphaned animals and then release them back into the wild. They will collect the animal where possible, so if you find an injured animal, please call Wild Care NT. Alternatively, some local vets are affiliated with care networks, and you may be able to drop the animal off during business hours with no charge. For more information, visit www.wildcrnt.org.au or phone your local vet. 105. nt.gov.au Variable Message Signs Variable message signs are large electronic signs placed on the side of some roads. They display messages to warn motorists of changes in normal traffic conditions on the road ahead, such as fog, crashes, roadworks, congestion, and road closures. 
These early warnings help ensure a safe and efficient traffic flow. Driving safely through roadworks. You must proceed with caution when approaching and driving through roadworks. You will see traffic controllers and roadwork signs as you approach the site. If there are no traffic controllers on site, you must still obey the roadwork and speed limit signs. Traffic controllers and roadwork signs are used to warn drivers and riders to slow down, as there may be workers or hazards on or near the road ahead, and be prepared to slow down or stop. They also show the travel path through, around, or past work sites. You must always follow the directions of the traffic controller for your safety and that of the workers. Speed limit, roadwork ahead, and slow down signs, as well as portable traffic lights and barriers at roadworks, are enforceable and must be obeyed. Samples of roadwork signs and their meanings are on the following pages: Motor Vehicle Registry Road Users Handbook, 107, nt.gov.au, Temporary Roadwork Signs. Temporary roadwork signs are used on roads to warn drivers and riders to slow down, look out for any hazards, and be prepared to stop. They also show the travel path through, around, or past work sites. Roadwork signs are usually rectangular and have a reflective background, black border, and a symbol or words explaining the hazard. They are usually red and black or yellow and black. You must obey all roadwork signs and any signal from a traffic controller, and give way to any worker. Rectangular sign with an image of a person holding a sign. Traffic controller ahead. Be prepared to stop. Rectangular sign with an image of a person digging. Workers ahead. Yellow rectangular sign with the words "roadwork ahead." Approaching roadwork. Slow down and prepare to stop. Yellow rectangular sign with the words "end roadwork, end of roadwork." Handheld lollipop signs marked "stop" and "slow." These signs are held by traffic controllers. You must obey them. Motor Vehicle Registry Road Users Handbook, 109. Red square sign with the words "prepare to stop," "slow down," and "prepare to stop." Lit arrow sign on vehicle or at the side of the road. Road hazard ahead. Merge into another lane. Mobile traffic signal device. Temporary traffic lights, sometimes used on roadwork. The same rules apply for these as normal traffic lights. Yellow sign with the words "No lines." Do not overtake unless safe. No lines are marked on the road. Take care if overtaking. Closed lane ahead. Yellow rectangular sign with cars and rocks. Watch out for loose stones. Forty kilometers per hour speed limit for road work. Nt.gov.au. Lanes. You should stay in the middle of the lane you are driving in. If there are no lanes marked on the road, drive near the left side of the road. Before changing lanes, signal in plenty of time to warn other road users and check for other vehicles by looking in your mirrors and your blind spot. Look over your shoulder. You must give way to vehicles in the lane you are moving into. Merging lanes. Fifty-nine. Sometimes the lane line ends before the lanes merge, as shown below. When merging in this situation, the vehicle that is behind gives way to the vehicle ahead. Use caution when merging. Car B gives way to car A. Motor Vehicle Registry Road Users Handbook. Where the lane you are driving in ends, and you have to cross lane lines to merge with the traffic in another lane, you must give way to all traffic in the lane you are merging into. One hundred and eleven. Car A gives way to car B. Nt.gov.au. Slip lanes. Slip lanes are used to improve safety and traffic flow for vehicles turning left. Unless there are signs to indicate parking, you should not stop in a slip lane. Slip lanes can be marked by a painted island or traffic island. You must use a slip lane where one is provided. Car A in the slip lane. Must give way to the vehicle turning right at the intersection. Motor Vehicle Registry Road Users Handbook. Median Turning Lanes. Vehicles traveling in either direction can use a median turning lane to enter or leave the road at a driveway, property access, or intersection. Median turning lanes have signposts or markings on the road and are a shared part of the road. Vehicles using median turning lanes must give way to all other vehicles. One hundred and thirteen. 
Median Turning Lanes nt.gov.au Truck Lanes Where a truck's Use Left Lane sign appears, trucks must use the left lane until a sign indicates otherwise. There is an identical sign for buses. Any other vehicles can also use this lane. Bicycle Lanes When a bicycle lane is marked on the road, cyclists must use it. Bicycle lanes can only be used by bicycles, but you can drive in these lanes for less than 50 meters to enter or leave the road at a driveway or intersection. Overtaking Overtaking other vehicles can be dangerous because it can be difficult to judge the space and distance required to overtake safely. Both single-lane and multi-lane overtaking maneuvers involve risk and require extreme care. If you have any doubts, it is best not to overtake and to wait until it is safer. You must overtake on the right unless the vehicle you are overtaking is waiting to turn right. The vehicle you are overtaking is stationary. Both you and the other vehicle are traveling in marked lanes on a multi-lane road. In these instances, you can overtake on the left side if it is safe. When overtaking, you must not go over the speed limit. Make sure the road ahead is clear and there is enough space ahead for you to overtake safely and return to the line of traffic. Check side streets and other lanes to make sure nothing will enter the space while you are overtaking. Check mirrors. Signal each change in position long enough to give sufficient warning to others. Check blind spots for cyclists, motorcycles, and other vehicles before changing your lane position. Pass the cyclist or vehicle with enough space to avoid a collision. You should be able to see the cyclist or vehicle you have overtaken in your rear vision mirror before you move in front of it. Give way to traffic already in the lane you are moving to. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook Overtaking Cyclists When passing a cyclist, you must leave a minimum passing distance of 1 meter when passing a cyclist in a 60 kilometers per hour or less speed zone or 1.5 meters when the speed limit is over 60 kilometers per hour. When you are passing a cyclist, if it is safe to do so, you can drive to the right of the center of the road. Drive to the right of the dividing line. Drive on a dividing strip that is at the same level as the road. Drive on or over continuous lines around a painted island. Straddle lanes. Move across lanes. Drive not completely in a single line of traffic, only if the driver has a clear view of any approaching traffic and can do so safely. You must not overtake. Unless you have a clear view of any approaching traffic and you can complete the maneuver safely, do not commence an overtaking maneuver when approaching a crest, curve, or any limited vision situation. Another vehicle that is stopping or has stopped at a pedestrian crossing, intersection, or railway crossing. Across an unbroken, continuous, line, unless the line closest to you is broken. Where a road narrows. On roads with a speed limit of more than 80 km per hour, or a keep left unless overtaking sign, you must drive in the left lane unless you want to overtake or turn right. When being overtaken, you must not increase your speed. Keep left and allow enough space for the overtaking vehicle to pass and move back into the lane. Stay within your lane. 115. nt.gov.au Oversized Vehicles If you see the sign, the vehicle ahead is wider and or longer than normal. Sometimes an oversized vehicle will be accompanied by police or a pilot vehicle, vehicle with flashing lights, to warn traffic that the load following is very wide or long, unless you want to overtake or turn right. You must follow any directions given by police. You should also follow any reasonable directions given by the occupants of the pilot vehicle, provided you do not break the law. When approaching an oncoming oversized vehicle, you should be careful and reduce speed. Keep to the left of the center line. Be prepared to move to the left side of the road if necessary. You should use extreme care when overtaking an oversized vehicle. When you overtake an oversized vehicle, you can briefly flash high beam immediately before starting the overtaking maneuver. This sends a message to the driver of the oversized vehicle that you are about to overtake them. Large, heavy turning vehicles. Be careful of large, heavy vehicles displaying a do not overtake turning vehicle sign. A long vehicle can use two lanes to turn left or right if it displays the sign. 
When a long vehicle is turning and displays the sign, you must not pass on the left if it is turning left or on the right if it is turning right. You need to be careful of all large, heavy vehicles that are turning. If you put your vehicle in the path of a turning vehicle, you could be crushed. Figure 1. Do not overtake turning vehicle sign. Figures 2 and 3 show examples of oversized vehicles turning at an intersection. Figure 1. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook. 117. Figure 2. Bridges. Approach bridges with care because they are often narrow. If you think two vehicles cannot fit on a narrow bridge, give way to the other driver. When you come to a bridge that is only wide enough for two vehicles, slow down and drive carefully. Sometimes you are not allowed to overtake a vehicle going in the same direction or to pass a vehicle coming towards you. If there is a give way sign, you must give way to any vehicle traveling in the opposite direction either on or approaching the bridge. If there is a no overtaking or passing sign, you must not overtake any vehicle traveling in the same direction. Figure 3. nt.gov.au Parking. Parking rules are designed to stop vehicles from parking where it could be dangerous or inconvenient for others. Things to check when parking. Before getting out of your vehicle, you must check your mirrors and blind spots for pedestrians, bicycles, or other vehicles. Before leaving your parked vehicle, you must make sure that the parking brake is on. The gears are engaged either in first gear if you are parking on a downhill slope or reverse if you are parking on an uphill slope. Automatic vehicles should be left in park. If you are going more than three meters from your vehicle, you must take the key out of the ignition. Lock all doors and windows if there is no one in the vehicle. Before opening your door on a roadway, you must make sure that you do not endanger road users or obstruct traffic. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook General Parking Rules You must not stop your vehicle, bring it to a stop, and either stay with the vehicle or leave it parked in the following circumstances. Double parked in the road alongside a car that is parked. Across a driveway, on a median strip or traffic island, in a clearway, on footpaths and nature strips, between bus stop, bus zone, taxi stand, or taxi zone signs, in a safety zone or within 10 meters before or after a safety zone, within an intersection, in a slip lane, within 20 meters of an intersection with traffic lights, unless a sign allows you to park there. Within one meter of another vehicle parked in front or behind does not apply when angle parking. Within 10 meters of an intersection without traffic lights, unless a sign allows you to park there. 119. 10m. nt.gov.au. Within three meters of any double center lines. Within three meters of an Australia post letter box, unless dropping off or picking up passengers or mail. Within 20 meters before and 10 meters after a bus stop. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook. On or within 20 meters before and 10 meters after a children's crossing or pedestrian crossing. 121. 10M 20M. Within 10 meters before and 3 meters after a marked foot crossing with traffic signals. Within 1 meter of a fire hydrant, fire hydrant indicator, or fire plug indicator. On a railway level crossing. Within 20 meters before and after a railway level crossing. 20M 20M. When you are parking on a hill or a curve outside a built-up area, make sure that someone coming over the hill or around the bend can see your car from at least 100 meters away. nt.gov.au. Parallel parking. This is the usual way to park unless signs tell you otherwise. You must park in the same direction as the adjacent traffic, parallel, and as close as possible to the curb. You should be entirely within any marking lines and at least one meter from any other parked vehicle. 1M. Angle parking. Angle park at the curb if indicated by signs or marking lines. Park at an angle of 90 or 45 degrees unless a sign or road marking indicates differently. Always park your vehicle in the same direction as shown on the sign. When a sign does not give a direction, you must park front to curb. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook 
123. Motorcycle parking. If your vehicle is not a motorcycle, you must not park between these signs. You can stop to drop off or pick up passengers only. Parking restrictions. Parking in clearways or no parking zones restricts the traffic flow and creates danger for other road users. You must obey all parking signs. Accessible parking. Only vehicles driven by or carrying a current disabled parking permit can park in areas displaying a disabled parking sign. The disabled parking permit must be displayed in the parked vehicle. Disabled parking permit holders must comply with the conditions of use of the permit. P. Only. NT.gov.au. Hourly parking. These signs mean that in that area you can park at the curb for the time shown on the sign, between certain hours and on particular days. No parking. You must not stop for more than two minutes in a no parking area. You must remain in the vehicle or within three meters of the vehicle. Hours of operation can apply to some signs. This means restrictions apply for those times only. Disabled parking permit holders are allowed to park for up to five minutes in a no parking area. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook No stopping or no standing. These signs mean that you must not stop your vehicle at any point on the road or curb in the area in the direction of the arrow, unless there is a medical or other emergency. Sometimes a no stopping area is shown by a solid yellow edge line. Hours of operation can apply to some signs. This means restrictions apply for those times only. Pay Parking Parking signs show meter, ticket, or coupon parking areas. You can park at the curb for the length of time shown on the sign, provided you pay the required charge. You cannot park for longer than the length of time shown on the sign. Clearway. A clearway is used to improve traffic flow and safety during peak periods. 125. Clearway. Arrestor bed and safety ramp. Safety ramp and arrestor bed areas are used by heavy vehicles in cases of emergency, such as brake failure. They are usually located where there are steep gradients. Drivers must not drive on these areas unless necessary for safety. Safety ramp. 3-6. Monday through Friday. You must not stop your vehicle at the curb between these signs during the times shown, unless there is a medical emergency. Buses, taxis, and private hire cars can stop at the curb to pick up or set down passengers. A broken yellow edge line is also used to indicate a clearway. Arrestor bed. nt.gov.au Taxi zone. This sign means that you are not allowed to stop your vehicle in the direction of the arrow or arrows unless it is a taxi. Some taxi zones have times shown on the sign. This means restrictions apply for those times only. When you hail a taxi, make sure you are not in a no-stopping or a bus zone because taxis must not stop in these places. Bus zone. This sign means that you are not allowed to stop your vehicle in the direction of the arrow or arrows unless it is a bus. Hours of operation can apply to some signs. This means restrictions apply for those times only. Loading zone. Only drivers of vehicles principally constructed for carrying goods can park their vehicle in a loading zone. These vehicles can stop for up to 30 minutes if they are being loaded or unloaded. If you are driving any other sort of vehicle, you can only stop to pick up or set down passengers at the curb. Exceptions may apply to disabled parking permit holders. Hours of operation can apply to some signs. This means restrictions apply for those times only. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook 127 Permit Holders Work Zone A driver must not stop in a work zone unless the vehicle is actually involved in construction work in or near the zone. Any vehicle can stop to pick up or set down passengers. Hours of operation can apply to some signs. This means restrictions apply for those times only. Truck Zone you must not park or stop at the curb during the hours shown on the sign unless driving a truck over 4.5 tons GVM that is dropping off or picking up goods. Any type of vehicle can stop to set down or pick up passengers at the curb. Hours of operation can apply to some signs. This means restrictions apply for those times only. Lights and horns. About a third of car crashes occur at night. 
pedestrians, cyclists, and motorcyclists are harder to see at night than they are during the day. At night or when driving in hazardous weather conditions with reduced visibility, your vehicle must have clearly visible headlights, tail lights, number plate lights, clearance lights, and side marker lights if these are fitted to your vehicle. Headlights. Even in the daytime, driving with your vehicle's headlights turned on can improve the chance that other road users will see you. Your headlights must be on when. Driving between sunset and sunrise. At any other time when there is not enough light to be able to see a person wearing dark clothing from 100 meters away. nt.gov.au High beam. Use your headlights on high beam to see further ahead on any road, even if there are street lights. You must dip your headlights to low beam. When a vehicle coming towards you is within 200 meters of your vehicle. When driving 200 meters or less behind another vehicle. When you overtake another vehicle, you can briefly flash high beam immediately before starting the overtaking maneuver. Avoid lights that could dazzle. Do not use or allow any light fitted to your vehicle to dazzle another road user. Avoid looking at the headlights of oncoming vehicles. If you are dazzled by glare or high beam lights, look to the left side of the road and drive to the left of your lane, slow down, or pull over until your eyes recover. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook Parking Lights Make sure that other road users can see your Parked Vehicle Leave your parking or hazard lights on if necessary. Fog Lights Front and rear fog lights must only be used in fog or rain or when conditions such as smoke and dust limit your vision. It is a legal requirement that once conditions improve and you can see more clearly, the front and rear fog lights are switched off. If your vehicle is not fitted with fog lights, you can use your headlights during the day in these conditions. Hazard warning lights. Your vehicle's hazard warning lights must not be used unless the vehicle is stopped and obstructing the path of other vehicles or pedestrians, slow moving and obstructing other road users, stopped in an emergency lane, driving in hazardous weather conditions, fitted with hazard lights as part of an anti-theft or alcohol interlock device, horns and other warning devices. Your vehicle's horn and other warning devices are for warning other road users of a hazard. Your horn is not a way to greet other road users or for you to tell another driver you do not like their driving. Never use your horn out of frustration with another driver. You must not use the horn or any other warning device unless you need to warn other road users that your vehicle is approaching. You need to warn animals to get off the road. The horn is being used as part of an anti-theft or alcohol interlock device fitted to your vehicle. Emergency vehicles. In the Northern Territory, an emergency vehicle is a vehicle that is the property of police, fire and emergency services, an ambulance, or an Australian Protective Services vehicle. Give way when you hear a siren or see the flashing blue or red lights of an emergency vehicle such as police, fire, or ambulance. The siren means you need to get out of the way so the emergency vehicle has a clear passage through traffic. It is an offense to obstruct an emergency vehicle with the warning siren sounding or flashing red or red and blue lights. Emergency vehicle has a clear passage through traffic. 129. nt.gov.au Drivers must give way to emergency vehicles and they must also drive with due care. Use your indicators when giving way or pulling off the road. This tells the driver of the emergency vehicle that you know they are there. Do not slam on your brakes or stop in front of an emergency vehicle. Stopping suddenly could cause a crash. Keep driving until it is safe to pull over to the left. Do not block an intersection. Blocking intersections, even when attempting to give way to an emergency vehicle, is dangerous. Railway level crossings. There are more than 200 level rail crossings in the yellow diamond sign with black cross and red triangle on top. Red sign with the words railway crossing, cross together. Northern Territory. Some crossings have boom gates and some have flashing lights. Trains stop very slowly, so it is important to obey the road rules and give way to trains. A freight train traveling at 60 kilometers per hour can take up to 800 meters to stop, while a car takes 58 meters to stop. 
Level crossings can be dangerous, especially when there are no gates, booms, or flashing lights. When approaching a crossing, look and listen for trains. Slow down to a speed that allows you to stop quickly. Gates, booms, or lights. At gates, booms, or flashing lights, only cross when signals have stopped flashing and when the gates or booms are fully open. Railway crossing with traffic lights ahead. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook Stop Signals Traffic Lights Ahead Stop signals at railway crossings must be obeyed because trains are fast and heavy and cannot stop quickly. Check for trains even if the lights are not flashing. When the traffic on the other side of the railway crossing is stopped, stay behind the stop line until there is room for you to get all the way across safely. 131 Stop before crossing. Crossings without signals. Take extra care where there are no gates, booms, or flashing lights. Slow down. Look and listen for trains in both directions. There are usually warning signs placed ahead of the crossings. Check for other trains. If you have stopped for a train, always check that another one is not approaching the crossing before you move off. You must not drive onto a level crossing while a train is approaching. You must stop at a crossing if there is a stop sign. There is a gate or boom across the road. Red lights are flashing. A railway employee signals you to do so. You are carrying flammable, explosive, or dangerous goods. You must stop between 3 and 15 meters before the crossing. nt.gov.au Towing. Towing a trailer or a caravan can be dangerous and difficult and takes more knowledge and skill than normal driving. Rules for towing. The trailer or caravan must be registered and roadworthy. You must not tow more than one trailer or one other vehicle. No one is allowed to ride in a trailer or caravan while it is being towed. Signal lights must be fitted to the trailer and be in working order. Safety chains, breakaway chains, must securely attach the trailer to the vehicle. When towing a caravan and driving on a road without streetlights, you must drive at least 60 meters behind heavy vehicles or other vehicles towing caravans, unless overtaking. Tow fittings on vehicles are rated for a particular weight. The trailer's gross vehicle mass, the weight, should not exceed the rated towing limits of the vehicle. See your vehicle manual or compliance plates for details of the towing limit for your vehicle. If learner or provisional license holders are driving, you must display your L or P signs on the back of the trailer. Loads must be secured. Ref page 54. What to do after a crash. If you are involved in a crash, you must stop immediately and give as much help as possible to anyone involved in the crash. If anyone is injured or killed, you should call the police and ambulance. Dial 000. You should make the area as safe and as visible as possible to other road users to make sure that another crash does not occur. This could be achieved by placing another vehicle, warning triangles, or lights at a safe distance from the scene of the crash to warn approaching road users. Remove anything that falls from or out of crashed vehicles that could endanger the safety of others, such as debris or broken glass. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook If you need to clear debris from the road, it is important that you ensure your personal safety at all times. Following a crash Switch off the ignition of the immobilized vehicle to reduce the risk of fire. Switch on hazard warning lights. The police may attend and investigate crashes where a person is killed or injured. A vehicle needs to be towed away. There is damage to property or animals. A person fails to stop or exchange information. A driver is believed to be under the influence of alcohol or drugs. If police do not attend the crash scene, you must report the crash as soon as possible within 24 hours, unless in exceptional circumstances, where you are in a crash and either your vehicle or another vehicle needs to be towed away. There is damage to property or injured animals. You are unable to provide the details of the drivers, vehicles, and witnesses to the crash to the owner of any damaged property. You must give police that attend the crash scene details of the crash, vehicles involved, your name, address, and, if known, information about any witnesses or the drivers of other vehicles involved. You must always show police your driver license. 
Regardless of damage, if you're asked to, you must provide the owner slash driver of any other vehicle involved in the crash with the following information. Your name, address, and license details. Your vehicle registration number. The name and address of the vehicle owner if you do not own it. You can ask the other drivers for similar information. If you are involved in a crash with a truck carrying a dangerous load, call the police or fire brigade on 000. Do not touch spilled chemicals or breathe the fumes or dust. Warn people away from the crash. An emergency procedures guide will be in a holder attached to the truck driver's door. Follow these procedures if it is safe to do so. Needing a tow truck. If you need the assistance of a tow truck after being involved in a crash, you have the right to. Decide where your vehicle will be towed. Decide who will tow your vehicle. 133 nt.gov.au Animals and Vehicles There are things you should know about traveling with animals and vehicles and what to do following an incident with an animal. Animals on or near road areas are a common occurrence in the Northern Territory, in most situations roaming. Or grazing wildlife and livestock are not usually a high risk to road users as long as caution is used. Slow down and be prepared to stop for wildlife or livestock on or near the road. Occasionally, livestock or wildlife will be encountered in build-up areas where the risk to road users and the animal is much greater. If you see an animal that is likely to cause a hazard to road users in a build-up area, contact police or the RSPCA. If you see an animal on the road, alive or dead, do not swerve violently to avoid the animal. This can cause you to lose control of your vehicle or to hit oncoming traffic. Stop if you can do so safely or slow down and steer around the animal in a controlled manner. If you cannot avoid the animal safely, you might have to hit it to avoid injury or death to yourself and others. If you hit an animal with an identification tag, contact the owner, police, or the RSPCA. If possible, injured domestic animals should be taken to the nearest vet or animal shelter. If you injure or kill a native or wild animal, try to remove it from the road, but take care because some animals carry young in their pouches. For help and advice, contact a vet or wild care NT or the local wildlife rescue service. Rules around animals. A driver, motorcycle rider, bicycle rider, or passenger must not lead an animal, including by tethering, while the vehicle is moving. Animals should be seated or housed and secured in appropriate areas of the vehicle. You must not transport a dog in or on a vehicle, including in the back of a Uda, unless the dog is restrained or enclosed in a way that prevents the dog from interfering with the driver or falling from the vehicle. Animals can be unpredictable, and it is recommended that all animals traveling inside or on a vehicle are restrained to prevent distraction to the driver. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook 135 People aged 16 to 34 years are the most likely to be killed or seriously injured in a speed-related crash. Vehicle Registration NT Rego App NT Rego is the free official NT government app for your smartphone slash tablet, helping you check the registration of an NT registered vehicle, set renewal reminders, and securely manage your NT vehicle registration. Motor Vehicle Registry Road Users Handbook. Vehicle Registration and Compulsory Third Party Insurance. To make sure that compensation for victims of road trauma is available, all Australian jurisdictions require compulsory third party insurance. CDPI, cover for registered vehicles. In the NT, when a vehicle is registered, the CDPI cover is paid at the same time as the registration fee. The CDPI is covered under Motor Accidents, Compensation, Act 1979, and is administered by the Motor Accidents Compensation Commission, MAC, on behalf of the NT government. The no-fault scheme compensates all people injured in a motor vehicle crash in the NT regardless of where they reside, NT, interstate or overseas, and regardless of where their vehicle is registered, NT or interstate. An injured person may include pedestrians, drivers, passengers, motorcyclists, and cyclists as long as their injuries were caused by, or arising out of, the use of a motor vehicle. 
The scheme is funded by motor vehicle owners who pay a compensation contribution when they register their Northern Territory vehicle. It provides compensation for medical and hospital care, rehabilitation services, permanent impairment, loss of the use of a limb, loss of earning capacity benefits. In the event of a death, the scheme will also contribute to the funeral expenses, pay benefits to surviving spouse, dependent or orphan children, and, where appropriate, dependent parents. Benefits may be reduced if the injured person did not obey certain traffic regulations. For example, a 25% reduction for not wearing a seat belt will apply, and zero loss of earning benefits or whole person impairment if driving an unregistered vehicle or if your license had expired, been canceled or suspended. No benefits are payable if you are using the vehicle unlawfully or without the consent of the owner, using the vehicle in the commission of an indictable offense. Escaping lawful apprehension or intending to inflict death or injury on yourself or others. No compensation is payable if the injuries sustained are compensable under workers' compensation legislation. If your anti-registered vehicle, regardless of who is driving the vehicle, is involved in a crash interstate and the NT vehicle is deemed to be at fault, your seat EPI cover will indemnify you. That means that if you or the driver of the anti-registered vehicle is sued for personal injuries sustained by a third party, MAC will cover these costs. 137. NT.gov.au if you or the driver of the anti-registered vehicle was charged with a serious driving offense as a result of the crash, Mac may have the right of recovery against the driver for all monies paid to the injured third party. For more information, please visit www.ntmacc.com.au. Driving an unregistered vehicle. It is an offense to stand or drive a motor vehicle on a road or road-related area if it is not registered. It is also an offense to cause or allow another person to stand or drive an unregistered motor vehicle on a road or road-related area. There could be large fines and other penalties for the driver and or owner of the vehicle. If you are driving an unregistered vehicle and are involved in a crash, you could be held personally liable for compensation to any person injured as a result of the crash. Vehicle Inspections Registration Renewal the MVR sends a courtesy renewal notice to the last known mailing address or nominated email address of the owner approximately five weeks before registration expiry. It is the responsibility of the driver to make sure that the vehicle they are driving is registered. If your registration renewal notice shows that the vehicle needs to be inspected, it must pass a roadworthiness inspection before the registration can be renewed. Roadworthiness inspections for registration renewal can be completed by an authorized inspector. After the vehicle passes the inspection, your authorized inspector will update your vehicle's record online and or provide you with an inspection report to show that it has passed. If the vehicle fails the inspection, you will get a copy of the inspection report listing the faults that must be fixed. You will not be able to renew the registration until the vehicle passes an inspection. You do not need to attend an MVR office to renew your vehicle registration. Once your authorized inspector has updated your roadworthiness inspection online, you can complete your registration renewal via the Trago app or via the NT, Gov, AU website. Alternatively, completed inspection reports can be sent to MVR via fax or email, and your registration renewal completed by calling 1300-654-628, going online or via the Trago app. For a list of authorized inspectors, visit the NTGOV.AU website or call 1300-654-628. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook. Other Inspections. Most vehicle inspections can be completed by an authorized inspector. If you are unsure whether your vehicle needs an inspection or who is authorized to do the inspection, contact MVR on 1300-654-628 or email mvr at nt.gov.au. Vehicle Number Plates Northern Territory-issued number plates are required on the front and back for cars, trucks and public vehicles, buses, taxis, and on the back only for motorcycles and trailers. 
When the vehicle registration has expired or the vehicle registration is transferred interstate, the NT number plates must be returned to the MVR. Number plates on the vehicle you drive or own must be issued by the registration authority, MVR, must be clearly readable, not dirty, faded, or damaged, must have a light at the rear number plate so that it is clearly visible at night, must be able to be seen and read clearly from anywhere within a 45-degree arc of the vehicle's centerline at a distance of at least 20 meters. See diagrams below. Number plates must not be hidden by anything, such as a tow bar or anything being carried in or on the vehicle. If you carry bicycles on a bike rack that hides the rear number plate in any way, you must either move the rear number plate to a position where it can be clearly seen or buy a bike rack number plate to attach to the bike rack. A bike rack number plate has the same number as your car's number plates and can be ordered from the MVR. 139. 45 degrees. Number plate visible to 20 M. 45 degrees. Number plate visible to 20 M. 45 degrees, 45 degrees. nt.gov.au. It is an offense to alter number plates in any way. Attach a number plate to any vehicle other than the plates issued by MVR. Use a number plate cover that is not flat, clear, or untinted. Number plate covers that have lines across them are not considered to be clear. Roadworthiness. Before you drive, you need to make sure that your vehicle is roadworthy. A roadworthy vehicle is one that is safe to drive and meets the standards required by law. The items below are just some of the things you should check regularly. These are not the full requirements for all vehicles. If you have any doubt about the rules that apply to your vehicle, contact the MVR. Tires. Your vehicle's tires, including the spare tire, must be in good condition and have a tread at least 1.5 millimeters deep across the entire tread surface. Keep the tires inflated to the pressure recommended by the manufacturer or they could overheat or wear. Prematurely and fail. The sidewalls of the tires should not have any cracks or bumps. If your tires wear unevenly, there might be a problem with the steering or suspension. Brakes. The brakes on your vehicle must be working properly and capable of stopping the vehicle in a reasonable distance if you need to stop suddenly. If your brakes are not working properly, you might not be able to slow or stop the vehicle and you will put yourself and others in danger. Lights. The lights on your vehicle help you to see the road and areas around it. They also help other road users to see you and know what you are planning to do. The lights on your vehicle must be working properly at all times, even if you are not driving in the dark. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook Generally, all motor vehicles must be fitted with White headlamps at the front of the vehicle Red stop lamps at the rear of the vehicle Front and rear position lamps, parking lights A number plate lamp Orange turn signal lamps, indicators Seat belts Seat belts must be available for all passengers. They should be securely fitted, and all components, including retractors where fitted, must function correctly. Seat belt webbing must be firmly secured to its end fittings and must not be damaged, cut, knotted, or frayed. Windows, windscreen, and wipers. The glazing, windows, and windscreen on your vehicle must be in good condition. Cracks, scratches, and other damage to the windows could stop you from being able to see the road and other road users. Your vehicle must have a windscreen wiper or other device for removing rain and other moisture from the windscreen in front of the driver. The windscreen wiper must be able to be operated from the driver's seat of the vehicle. Any tinting on your vehicle's windows must not prevent you from being able to see out properly. There are specific requirements for the level of tint that is allowed, Check the MVR website for more information at nt.gov.au. Smoke and oil. Your vehicle should not leak oil or put out excessive amounts of smoke. Oil leaks and blowing smoke could be hazardous too. Other road users and could indicate a mechanical problem with the vehicle. Protrusions on the front of vehicles. Some vehicles are fitted with accessories and equipment such as bull bars, spotlights, fishing rod holders, and bonnet scoops if not designed and fitted correctly. 
These types of accessories could interfere with the driver's vision or have sharp protrusions that could be dangerous for other road users. A defect notice can be issued to a vehicle if its accessories or equipment are likely to be a source of danger to the public. 141. nt.gov.au Defect notices. Police or a transport inspector can stop and inspect your vehicle and give you a defect notice if the vehicle does not meet the roadworthiness standard required under the Motor Vehicles Act 1949. For example, if your car is too noisy, drips oil, or blows too much smoke, it will be given a defect notice. Infringement notices, fines, or other penalties can also be issued for seriously defective or missing equipment at the same time as a defect notice is issued. If your vehicle gets a defect notice, it must be repaired, have a full roadworthy inspection by a police officer or transport inspector, and officially cleared. Sometimes you are not allowed to drive the vehicle at all until it has been repaired and the defect notice cleared. In this case, you will need to have the vehicle towed if it needs to be moved. It is an offense to drive a defective vehicle contrary to the conditions on the defect notice, even if you are not the person responsible for having it repaired. Before driving on the road, check. The registration is current. Number plates are the ones that are recorded on the vehicle's registration. Brakes are working. Tires are not worn. Horn is working. Seatbelts are in good working order. System lights and indicators are working. Do not drive if there is a warning light on. Windscreen and mirrors are clean. Wipers and washers are working. Headlights and brake lights are working and are clearly seen. You must not drive at night if your lights are not working. Steering wheel and driver's seat is adjusted so that you have a clear view of the road and can reach the controls easily. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook 143 Penalties Be safe. Be train smart. There are over 200 railway level crossings in the Northern Territory. Trains can't stop quickly, so you need to be train smart. Slow down, stop at level crossings, and look both ways before proceeding. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook 145 Traffic Offenses Penalties for traffic offenses include fines, disqualification from holding or applying for a license, license cancellation, refusal or suspension, and in extreme cases, imprisonment. Demerit points for traffic offenses. If you break the traffic laws, you can be fined. For certain traffic offenses, you will also have demerit points recorded against your license. There is a limit to the number of points you can build up before your license is suspended. You can check your current NT demerit points tally anytime at the NT.gov.au website. There are different limits for different types of licenses. Make sure you understand the points limit for your license. Speeding offenses. Penalties for exceeding the speed limit include demerit points, fines, and license suspension. Penalties increase depending on how many kilometers over the speed limit you are going. Other serious driving offenses. If you are convicted of serious driving offenses, you can be disqualified from driving by a court. The court decides how long you should be disqualified and you could even be sent to prison. These types of offenses are heard in front of a magistrate at a local court and penalties include a large fine, a prison term, and disqualification from driving. Heavier penalties. Apply for second or subsequent offenses. These offenses include driving or attempting to drive under the influence of alcohol or drugs, driving or attempting to drive when your alcohol level is over the limit for your license, refusing to take a breath test, not stopping after a crash in which someone was injured or killed. Driving at a dangerous speed. Driving in a dangerous manner. Operating a vehicle without a valid license for the type of vehicle. Negligent or dangerous driving causing injury or death. Northern Territory law provides for serious charges to be laid against people driving a vehicle in a negligent or dangerous manner that causes injury or death. As the driver of a vehicle involved in a crash where somebody is injured because of your negligent driving, you could be imprisoned, face a heavy fine, and a period of disqualification. If somebody is killed in such a crash, you could be imprisoned and face a higher fine. 
If you are driving a vehicle at a speed or in a manner that is dangerous to the public, and you are involved in a crash that results in injury or death, the penalties can be severe. Should somebody be injured as a result of your dangerous driving, you could be imprisoned. nt.gov.au Hooning. The penalties for hooning are severe. Hooning is taking part in unauthorized street races and speed trials, burnouts, damaging the surface of a road or public place. If the police suspect you have been involved in hooning, they can take possession of your vehicle on the spot for up to 48 hours and you can be fined. The courts may impose other penalties that include impoundment for a period of more than 48 hours, forfeiture, a fine, or imprisonment. Drink driving. Not complying with the BSE laws could lead to you being charged with a range of offenses including driving under the influence, exceeding the legal BAC limit, refusing a breath test, refusing a blood test. These charges could result in fines, demerit points, cancellation, or suspension of your license and or imprisonment. The drink driving penalties increase according to the level of alcohol detected in the driver's blood and any previous drink driving offenses. Penalties are severe and could include Large fines that increase if a second offense is committed. Immediate license suspension. Prison terms that increase when a second offense is committed. A period of disqualification from driving up to lifetime disqualification. Alcohol ignition lock, AL, program. An AL is a breath testing device that prevents the vehicle being started if the driver has been drinking. The AL program will affect repeat drink drivers convicted of a relevant offense on a second or subsequent occasion. For more information, go to the nt.gov.au website. Driving without a license. The requirement for all drivers to carry their license is to assist police with traffic enforcement. All drivers must carry their license with them every time they drive. Heavy penalties apply for driving without a license. If you fail to produce your license when requested, you could be issued with an on-the-spot fine. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook Larger penalties could apply if you are convicted of driving while serving a non-driving period for being disqualified from holding or obtaining a driver license, or when your license has been canceled, refused, or suspended. 147. Fine Defaults Slash Unpaid Fines if you do not pay a fine within the time allowed, the matter will be referred to the Fines Recovery Unit, FRU. The FRU manages all aspects of fine recovery, including taking payments, making time to pay arrangements, providing information to the public about the enforcement when no other solution can be found. These enforcement orders range from license and registration suspension through to civil enforcement and community work orders. If the outstanding fine amount is not paid, the MVR will be advised by the FRU to suspend your license and or refuse to do certain business with you until all fines have been paid. If your license has been suspended for a fine default and you pay the fine, the MVR will be advised by FRU to lift the suspension. Glossary Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook Adjacent direction, coming from the left or right, across your path. ANCAP, Australasian New Car Assessment Program, www.ancap.com.au. Angle parking, when a vehicle is parked at an angle and not parallel to the curb, boundary, or edge of the road. The requirement is usually indicated by signs or road markings. Amber, the yellow color used for traffic lights. Approaching, getting closer to, from any direction. Approved bicycle helmet, a helmet that complies with Australian Standard AS slash NZS 2063 pedal cycle helmets or as approved by the registrar. Approved child restraint. For a child under 12 months, an approved child restraint complies with Australian Standard AS slash NZA 1754 colon 2000 child restraint systems for use in motor vehicles. Arterial road a main road that carries a lot of traffic between suburbs or within cities or towns. ATM, aggregate trailer mass, the maximum loaded mass, or weight, transmitted to the ground via the axle or axles of a trailer when the trailer is loaded and connected to a towing vehicle. 
axle, bar on which wheels rotate. BAC, blood alcohol concentration given as grams of alcohol per 100 milliliters of blood. BRAC, breath alcohol content given as grams of alcohol per 210 liters of exhaled breath. Theme, lights, angle and brightness of lights, low or high. Blind spots, see also head check, area that is not seen in mirrors. Black spot slash black length, a place or length of road with a high rate of crashes. Bicycle, a two- or three-wheeled vehicle designed to be propelled by human power. Includes a powered cycle, but does not include a wheelchair or wheeled recreational device, wheeled toy, or any vehicle with an auxiliary motor capable of generating a power output over 200 watts. Boom. Long pole used to block the road at a railway crossing. Buffering, positioning your vehicle to create maximum space around you, away from hazards. Build-up area, in relation to a length of road, means an area in which there are buildings on land next to the road. Or there is street lighting, at intervals not over 100 meters for a distance of at least 500 meters, or if the road is shorter than 500 meters for the whole road. Bystander, person present but not involved in an event. Cancelled license, you can no longer use your license, that is, you can no longer drive. 149. nt.gov.au Child restraint, specific seat belts, seats, or capsules that children under a certain age are required to use slash wear. E.g. baby restraints, child seats, child safety harnesses. Clearway, a stretch of road along which stopping and parking are prohibited during certain times of day, such as morning and afternoon peak periods. It is designated by signs with the times marked on them. Colliding, crashing into. Crash avoidance space, the space a driver needs to manage in order to prevent a potential crash. Compliance plate, the plate that identifies a vehicle as being manufactured to safety standards applicable to the time of manufacture. Compulsory, necessary, required, must do. Continuing road, at a T-intersection means the road on which the traffic route continues through the intersection. It is not necessarily the top of the T, but will be designated by signs and road markings. Covering the brake, where your right foot is off the accelerator and over the brake pedal without activating the brake. See also setting up the brake. Default speed limit, the speed limit where there are no speed limit signs. Defined, explained. Demerit, points, there are different points limits for different types of licenses, learner, provisional, etc. Demerit points are recorded against your license for a range of traffic offenses, e.g. speeding. If you get too many demerit points, your license could be suspended. Device, a piece of equipment. Diabetes, disease that affects the body's use of sugar. Disability, driving, physical condition that could affect your driving. Disqualified, license, you are not allowed to hold or obtain a license. You can no longer drive. Dividing line, a road marking formed by a line or two parallel lines, either broken or continuous, designed to indicate the parts of the road to be used by vehicles traveling in opposite directions. Driver, a person who is driving, riding, or in control of a vehicle. Driving instructor, a person who instructs learner or provisional drivers, for money or reward, on how to drive. Eco-driving, a style of driving to reduce fuel consumption and help the environment by reducing greenhouse. Gas emissions. Edge line. Line marked along the road at or near the far left or right. Edge filtering, when a motorcycle passes between a line of traffic and the curb slash shoulder of the road or parked vehicles. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook. Emergency Vehicle, a vehicle that is the property of police, fire and emergency services, an ambulance or an Australian Protective Services vehicle. Endorsed, a statement placed on a document e.g. a license or registration papers. Engine capacity, engine size, usually stated in liters or cubic centimeters, cc. One liter equals 1,000 cubic centimeters. Epilepsy, a medical condition that can lead to a person having fits. Exceed, go beyond, 
as with speed. To exceed the speed limit is to go faster than the speed limit. Exempt. If you're exempt, a particular requirement does not apply to you, e.g. tests or fees. Expired. License. The date on the license is in the past and the license is therefore no longer valid. Explosive. Something that is dangerous because it could blow up. Fatal. Something that results in death. Fatigue. The experience of feeling sleepy, tired, or exhausted. Fatigue affects both your body and your ability to drive safely. Field of vision. What you can see without moving your eyes or head. Flammable. Easily set on fire. Flash high beam. To quickly switch the headlights from low beam to high beam and back. Following distance. The distance between your vehicle and the vehicle traveling ahead of you in the same direction. Following distance is also called headway. Foot crossing. Pedestrian crossing. Full license. A license other than a learner or provisional license. Goods vehicle. A goods vehicle is one designed primarily for the carriage of goods. Graduated licensing scheme. The license stages required in order to gain a full license. Gross combination mass. GCM, the maximum laden mass of a motor vehicle plus the laden weight of any trailers. Gross vehicle mass, GVM, the maximum loaded mass or weight permissible for the vehicle as specified by the vehicle manufacturer on the identification plate or, if not specified, as determined by the Registrar of Motor Vehicles and identified on the registration certificate. Hazard, any possible danger that might lead to a crash. Hazard lights, flashing orange warning lights found on most vehicles. Head check, looking over your shoulder to the left or right to make sure that there's nothing in your blind spot. Also known as shoulder check. Heavy vehicle, a vehicle with a GVM greater than 4.5 tons. 151. nt.gov.au Heavy Vehicle Driver's Handbook, a publication that explains road rules that apply to heavy vehicles. Buses and Trucks. Intersection, an area where two or more roads meet. It includes an area where vehicles traveling on different roads might collide and the area of any slip lane where roads meet. Interstate, travel, travel between jurisdictions, NT to WA, for example. International Driving Permit, a permit issued in accordance with the United Nations Convention on Road Traffic, Geneva 1949, for use in conjunction with a current driver license. Interpreter, knowledge test, a person who understands more than one language and reads the English test questions and then asks the applicant the same questions in another language. Curb, concrete edge of a road. Knowledge test, the driver knowledge test. Lane, an area of road marked by continuous or broken lines, designed for use by a single line of vehicles. Lane filtering, riding a motorcycle at low speed, less than 30 kilometers per hour, between vehicles that have either stopped or moving slowly and traveling in the same direction. Lane splitting, riding a motorcycle between stationary or moving traffic at an unsafe speed of more than 30 kilometers per hour. Law. Rules set out by the government that must be followed. Level crossing, where a road and a railway meet and cross each other at the same level, including an area adjacent to the crossing that is denoted by painted cross, hatched road markings. License class, there are different licenses required for driving different vehicles of different sizes. E.g. motorcycle, car, etc. License condition, things that affect a license, e.g. must wear spectacles. License type, kind of license, such as learner, provisional, full. Load, items carried on a vehicle from one place to another. Microsleep, brief, unintended periods of loss of attention that can occur when a person is fatigued but trying to. Stay awake. Median strip, a section that divides lanes in a two-way street. Minimum, least, smallest. Motorcycle Riders Handbook, a publication that explains road rules that apply to motorcycles and riders. Motorized Wheelchairs, a three- or four-wheeled mobility aid that cannot travel faster than 10 kilometers per hour. A user is defined as a pedestrian. Multi-laned Road, a road with more than one lane in each direction. 
These roads sometimes have a median strip dividing traffic traveling in each direction. Must, a mandatory requirement. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook. MVR, Motor Vehicle Registry. Transport inspectors, government personnel authorized to conduct vehicle inspections. Oncoming vehicle, a vehicle approaching you from the front. Organ donor, a person who wishes to donate their organs, liver, kidney, lungs, etc., for transplant after they have died. Overcrowding, having more occupants in a vehicle than available seats or seatbelts. Overloaded, vehicle, a vehicle carrying a load that is too big or heavy for the vehicle to carry it safely or legally. Overseas, outside Australia. Overtake, to pass a vehicle traveling in the same direction as you. Parallel parking, parking with the whole length of the vehicle next to the curb. Pedestrian, a person who travels by foot, walker, runner, for example, also includes people in motorized and non-motorized wheelchairs and people using wheeled recreational devices or toys. Penalized, penalty, punished for breaking a law by way of demerit points, fines, prison, or vehicle confiscation. Photo license, MVR-issued driver license. Points, see demerit points. Professional driver, a motor vehicle driver whose primary work is to transport goods or a bus, taxi, or hire car driver. Regulations, laws, see law. Renew, license, to replace a license that is no longer current. Rev, to increase engine speed. Revs, engine speed, measured in revolutions per minute, RPM. Road, an area used by the public for the purpose of driving or riding motor vehicles. Road-related area includes an area that divides a road, a footpath, nature strip, cycleway, and parking areas. Road rage, a range of antisocial or aggressive behavior by road users. Route, way from one place to another. Safety chains, trailer, chains that catch a trailer in an emergency, if the tow connection breaks, for example. Safe gap, a gap in traffic that enables you to turn, overtake, or cross an intersection without being involved in a collision or endangering other road users. This means that no other road users should need to take evasive action to avoid your vehicle. Scanning, constantly moving your eyes when driving so that you can detect hazards that could arise ahead, to the sides and behind your vehicle. Setting up the brake, where your right foot is off the accelerator and applying light pressure to the brake pedal. Should, a recommendation, advice. Shoulder, strip of land that runs down the side on an uncurbed road. 153. nt.gov.au Shoulder check, see head check. Single laned, a road with one lane running in each direction. Slip lane, a separate lane for a vehicle turning left. Spectacles, eyeglasses or contact lenses. Speeding, excessive or inappropriate speed, including not adjusting your speed to suit the conditions or speed limit. Speed limit, the legal speed for any particular stretch of road, license, or vehicle. Stationary, not moving. Supervising driver, a person who holds a full Australian license for the appropriate class of the vehicle and sits beside the learner driver. Suspended license, you can no longer use your license. That is, you can no longer drive. Tow truck, a vehicle that is designed to tow another vehicle. Towing, attaching and then pulling a trailer or vehicle behind a vehicle. Traffic offenses, actions that break the traffic law, sea law. Trailers, vehicles that do not have an engine and that are towed behind motor vehicles. Translator, a person who understands more than one language and who rewrites a written document such as a driver's license in English from another language, see interpreter. Unattended, child, a child left with no immediate, supervising, responsible adult. Unladen, not loaded, see load. U-turn, a complete change of direction, approximately an 180 degrees turn. Vehicle combination, vehicles joined together. An articulated vehicle can be a vehicle combination of a car and caravan, for example. Wigwag light, 
Flashing orange lights used as an early warning when approaching traffic lights or flashing orange lights on the rear of buses. Worksite, an area of road, bridge, or road reserve that includes the work areas and any additional length of road or bridge required for traffic control, such as signs and barriers. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook MVR Offices MVR Contact Center The MVR Contact Center can assist with all general inquiries. To speak to an operator, call 1-300-654-628 Monday to Friday between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. Website mvr.nt.gov.au Email mvr at nt.gov.au Post, GPO Box 530 Darwin Northern Territory 0801. Office Locations To find a motor vehicle registry office and office hours, please visit mvr.nt.gov.au or phone the MVR Contact Center on 1300-654-628. For more information on road safety and programs, please contact Road Safety on one 800 720-144 or visit the website at roadsafety.nt.gov.au. Feedback. In the interest of all road users and to further improve this publication, the department wants your feedback. When your feedback is received, it is recorded and will be considered in the next review of this publication. Please provide your feedback in the following format. Subject, Road Users Handbook, Feedback. Reference to the relevant section. Feedback slash suggestion. Please consider the impact on all road users when making a suggestion. Please send via post, email, or fax to Manager Driver Licensing Motor Vehicle Registry. Post, GPO Box 530 Darwin Northern Territory 0801. Email, mvr.license at nt.gov.au. Fax. 08-8999-3103. This publication is reviewed when there has been a significant change to legislation or a number of changes are required. On average, a revision is conducted every three to five years. To check you have the most up-to-date version of this publication, please visit the nt.gov.au website. 155. nt.gov.au. Notes. Motor Vehicle Registry Road User's Handbook Notes 157 nt.gov.au